Hello everybody and welcome back to the KCM. We had a bit of a hiatus there, one week off uh, due to a bunch of different tournaments going on, different qualifiers happening all at the same time. But we are back with an excellent lineup here today, bringing that up for you on screen right now. It's going to be an awesome show here today, Shun. It's looking like it. Yeah, we even got Shine back in the line. I'm happy to see him get a bit of limelight. And the YC also making a return. Stork as well. Bess, Snow, Queen, Jadong, Saktri, all fantastic players. So. Yeah, these guys, a lot of them have made it into the SSL. That's the new ASL. They changed the name to the Superstar League uh, because the name of the company changed, actually. But uh, they've all... Or most of them have made it through. I won't spoil the results for you guys of that if you're thinking about checking out the qualifiers. But since they've made it through those qualifiers, they don't have anything to worry about here. They're just going to be completely focused on this uh, semi-final and trying to get into that final spot where Taren is waiting. Yeah, and uh, it, I imagine Pros will have a much stronger showing in the semi-finals than they did in previous weeks, so I'm pretty excited to see what they're going to be bringing out today. Oh, yeah, I'm very glad that uh, we had that little bit of a hiatus. We had that, like, a week break there. Uh, wouldn't want to see anything other than the very best out of both these squads, and uh, with all the scheduling issues that were going on, it seemed like we weren't going to get the best out of Protoss, but here with this lineup, it's, it's looking fantastic. Um, I can go ahead and, and spoil you for this. Uh, uh, cover your ears if you don't want a qualifier spoiler, but Stork made it through into the SSL, and he did it over Mind, which was really an, an impressive game. So he is, he is playing a lot better than maybe what we're uh, expecting. Uh, I watched that game. It was very well done, so... We're looking forward to seeing what Stork can bring out. Uh, we're starting out here, though, yeah. with Saxory versus Best. Yeah, and uh, looks like Best are going to be going for a very quick Nexus here. I don't think Saxory's going to be punishing that. He's just gone for a Hatchery first on location at the third. So uh, everything is looking like a bit of an economic early game so far. Yeah, very heavy economy to start this one off. Saxory not going to send out a Drone Scout, just relying on this Overlord. Then that's great for best. He's going to be able to cut so many corners here. It's a very long map. Um, I cannot remember. I think it's called Minstrel, this map. Kind of a wild map. So let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, I mean, what, what's weird to me is that we've got a central basin in here, but there's two gases and two mineral fields there. So it's almost like two bases rolled into one. Very strange. I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about the late game zvp scenario on this there's, there's also the natural third that's not on this high ground also is like acts as a wall leading out into a new vector of attack later on once it's been mine that does get the hatchery down there barely in time after that uh pylon block so luckily it's actually not going to be slowed down in his efforts there was a bit of a slowdown there with the pylon initially blocking that but Glad that he wasn't uh, continuously blocked there because where else would you put your hatchery? There's really no other choice here. Yeah, uh, for, it's too awkward otherwise. Yeah, it's way too awkward. Um, you can see there's a base just down to the left of the natural, but that base has mineral patches which face outward towards the Protoss player, and you can just fire you know, Dragoon shots, uh, phase disruptors, and storms right over that wall. So really not an optimal base. I, I really don't know what situation those bases are going to end up being taken. I can only imagine they'll be taken once the, the the map has already been secured beyond that with like, you know, lurker lines or what have you. Right. I really don't see that being taken early on in this game here, that's for sure. Yeah, I, in this matchup, seems like uh, the middle of the map and some of those other bases can come into play like really, really late game if we end up getting there, but it's, uh, as with all experimental maps and any sort of new map that we add into the pool, generally the games are going to be a lot shorter. We've got a Hydralis Den on the way, actually, along with the layer. Interesting, he's not going to cancel that uh, layer and build the Hydra Den here. What do you think his uh, game plan is right now, Saxory? Well, he might be trying to hedge his bets a little bit. It might be like a, a fake 973 into like a, a drop, a slow drop into the main base is a possibility, I guess. Like, there's a few like 
technical things he could do. He could also just like go transition into a normal game after faking the 973 and just have a faster tech to work with. Uh, I don't necessarily think he has to do anything with this. It's just kind of like uh, hedging his bets while also kind of misrepresenting what he's actually trying to go for here. Well, let's see if he puts down a spire or not, because that's going to be the real indicator as to what he's up to. Ooh, this probe tries to sneak out, but it's actually all over that with the speed links. Doesn't quite get the probe, but he denies the scouting very importantly. Hydras are being produced. It seems like he wants to come across the map and maybe just kill the wall. Um, like you said, a kind of a fake Hydralis bus. Two can start yeah. up here. Uh, I think that I mean, he's, he must sniff something out here, Best. Best is uh, preparing with a double Stargate play as well, by the way. Oh my goodness. Ooh, this is interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is... This might backfire on Best. Um, I'm not too sure if I like this or not. Oh, so many links coming out here. Just a few Hydras. Is this that play where you go for... Just a few uh, range hydras break down the wall and then go in with lings. Um, this is quite a few lings. More hydras are coming though. Here we go. He's going to dive on top. Seems like we've got speed, but not range. So it's going to be hard to hit these cannons in the back. The zealots are buying a lot of time here. Probes have been pulled. He's doing a great job of blocking these lings from getting on top of the cannons. One more cannon is going to go down. There's just one left here, but it's in a very difficult to hit location. And the forces are drying up for Saxory. Can he actually break through? He's to continue on with this but it seems like he's finally pulled the trigger he's decided to stop uh, the cannons are no. finishing up he's gonna take this wall and he's got nothing else streaming across the map I mean there was a lot of cannons made pros being pulled off the the line as well so he has done a bit of indirect damage to the economy of best with this uh, onslaught and he's by no means all in he did still make a lair behind this he's now going into macro hatcheries so yeah a little bit of an interesting deviation to the early game here putting a bit of pressure onto best but now he's gonna still be going into his like full on macro mode and just getting double gas by probably and going into six hatch hydra as a follow-up yeah, the curtains have closed on that uh, aggressive hydralis play it's time to switch back into macro mode here saxory drops the spire in his main definitely wants to have some scourge available but i mean best has made what one corsair off of two stargates this is a really yeah. really rough spot for best right now yeah i think he misread the situation i think he he assumed that like he wouldn't actually i think he was trying to call Saxory's bluff and like there wasn't actually going to be any attempt at the front like that and uh, now he's realizing oh uh, the spy is going to be late because he did commit into such a thing and uh, now he's going to have to play a little bit of catch up but he still might be able to get some value out of having these two stars gates here I'm, I'm not entirely sure uh, how this will play out later on but with enough sellouts there uh, maybe he can get something going here but i have a feeling that saxory slowed him down enough with how many cannons were made that i don't think saxory is going to be at any danger anytime soon yeah he killed a lot of probes as well destroyed this wall the double forge is up in the main but those upgrades are pretty slow and so links will help a lot in the defense against these zealots saxory just massive up drones right now he's got a small force of hydro ling to come out and challenge these zealots you can see the zealots being slowed down quite a bit by those lings and buying enough time for these hydras just pick those off only two zealots remain and wow switching into mutilus now what wow. oh god yeah well this this actually could work out very well for best yeah, I mean, now he actually probably will have a lot of value out of these double Stargates, and being able to produce two sets at a time will get him up to that six count very quickly and allow him to come back out onto the map once again. I think he's on like four right now. Uh, making two at a time, though, will not take him very long at all to get up to a decent amount of uh, Corsairs here to start threatening the air of uh, Saxby. But I don't think he's committing too much into Mutas here. I think this might be a little bit of a bait and Oh, does catch one of those Corsairs with that Periscope. But um, is being uh, intercepted accepted right now by best looks like best wants to try and hunt these down and we'll get a bit of a neutron flare chase on some of these mirrors only uh, uh, three or so might make it out alive here well that was a great bait by saxer i mean he didn't build too many medalists in this flock and he's switching back now into hydras 
Uh, I was expecting him to be a little bit uh, more committed with the number of high, or number of uh, mutas that were popping out there, but yeah, he's getting those that drone count up. He's sent the mutas all around the map, split them up so that they don't all die. We have Templar coming out now for best, but Saxory is pretty huge right now, and he's got a very nice defensive position. Lots of Hydras are going to start to spam out here in a moment as that critical like 45 drone count is met by saxory he will just start no. to have a massive massive army being produced and likely to go into a fourth base one nice thing about this map fourth base very easy to take up there in the top right hand corner yeah we actually see like a dt kind of just hanging around there now to snipe any drone that's sent up there to try and get that base up and running uh, best is well aware that it's a little bit of a sneaky fourth that saxory can get up and going and already getting quite a few lurkers out he's looks like he's just planning on turtling up for the time being but i imagine he will want to take this fourth base want to push out onto the map in the next minute or two because he knows that best is finally going to start to come online of what he can do in this game yeah, he's finally starting to come online with those Templar and Storms. Means he can contend with the Mass Hydra Queen's Nest on the way already, but no fourth base just yet. One single Lurker here, just going to delay the third base from Bess as long as he can. At least until he has an Observer out. That's what that Lurker's there to do. Uh, the DT up in the top right-hand corner may be picked off here soon. I see a drone heading over there. Looks like that's going to get sniped uh, by the DT. But now that he's aware of it, he should be able to get rid of that DT and get this fourth base going. Very quick transition into Hive here from Saxory. I really like it, Shun. Yeah, I really like it as well. And uh, he still delayed the third base this entire time. It's only just now going down. He's already transitioning. He's actually getting the cancel on the third as well. He's slowing down Best way more than Best is slowing him down right now. Best is going to poke at the front here with some zealots, but there's no way he's going to get anything done with this little small manlet squad, unfortunately. Um, so actually, he's just kind of like dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's uh, kind of across the board right now. And it's going to very safely take this fourth base. A um, little bit concerned for Best going forward now. Very interesting decision here from Saxory. He, instead of getting plus one attack for Hydras, as you usually would, goes directly into plus one, plus one for the Ling upgrades. Getting that armor and melee attack right off the bat. You can see the problems with this map already kind of showing through. A lot of Lings getting caught over there at that random base, that mineral base over there. Oh my gosh, he's going to catch some of these Templar. The storms are going to get... Killed, he gets one Templar, that's huge. Already picking off yep. one just for a few links. That is a great trade for Saxory. It's going to make it that much harder for him to hold on a little bit later. But absolutely, not just have the fact that he's got less utility or less storms available. But always trading mineral units for gas units is always going to be a plus for you in almost every scenario. So nice to be able to secure that when you can. Just like Corsair's poking around the map right now, but I don't think Saxory's really weak anywhere. Like Pretty much everywhere is reasonably well protected. So even if there was a shuttle with a Dark Templar in it or something, I don't think that Best would find any damage here. So it looks like Saxory's going to go full on macro mode, which is when he's at his best uh no pun intended so a little bit worried for best in this game i don't know how he's going to navigate it i'm wondering if he'll take this as his fourth base this weird base that's kind of poking outwards he'll take that as his fourth and or, and stay attacking on this northern vector uh, i'm not entirely sure where's the best place to take a fourth as his pearls here maybe 12 o'clock um although it's pretty far away from your third. The, the yeah. regular uh, place to take the fourth down in the bottom left might be a little bit more convenient to defend. Some sunkins are coming up here, but I think that Saxer is not aware of this army making its way up here already. He doesn't have reinforcements coming. He has two Scourge, though, and the Scourge are going to connect. One does pick off an Observer. If he can snipe this one more Observer, he can absolutely hold this. But actually, Bess is put it, pushing forward further and further. Reinforcements are going to come up they're gonna get stormed best backs away after trading out some of that energy for a few lurkers a pretty good trade there but he's not able to break the base yeah, it just goes to show that a defended expansion is worth more than like two or three undefended expansions. If there was like any less um, units up there, like Best could have just walked up and stormed all the drones for free. So like at least Saxory's got like the bare minimal defense at each of these locations to prevent Best just coming in and bowling him over. So I'm pretty impressed with Saxory's play. It is going to be that pocket expansion in the bottom left corner as his 
probably is the safest choice to take, but there is an easy attack vector here, which Sanctuary is already on top of exploiting some Zerglings making the way there is a few Zealots to ward that away, though. 2 2 upgrades already on those as well. So, so far, so good for Best. He's probably going to get this expansion up uncontested. He's got more and more units coming down here to prevent this swell of uh, Zerglings from getting too much done. Well, he just spotted that shuttle. It's a pretty big uh, scout there for Saxory, knowing that the shuttle is out on the map, is going to uh, alert him to the fact that maybe Storm drops, maybe DT drops going to be a factor here uh, very soon, and he can get some uh, Scourge out to potentially snipe that or defend his bases. A Defiler is now out. Crackling is done. 2-2 two, two is already done here. Jen, at 15 wow. minutes, this is an incredibly strong army. Like, the Lurkers are not going to be hitting that hard, but these Lings are going to rip through everything, especially once we start to see Plagues. Yeah, yeah, once Plague gets online, we'll really start to see the value of this army. The Defiler's already made. He's just waiting on the research. I imagine Consume is just about done, and he's now researching Plague. And yeah, like, these Lings are already pretty scary, but Plague is what will make the difference and actually start to get that late-game super value going for Sector that he needs to actually trade well with the Protoss infantry. It looks like a drop into their main base, a little four-hitman squad of Zealots. Going to be trying to get some damage done, maybe uh, a couple of drones and killing the spawning pool or spire or something would be a good choice. I really like Saxer's play though. You can see he's got a sunken colony up there inside the main, plus a bunch of hydras just waiting for a play like this. Some good storms here hitting a lot of these lings. You can't be trading lings quite like that there, Saxery. You got to spread them out and send them in. Uh, you can't just be losing, you know. Uh, 20 links to one storm things are just gonna spiral out of control he loses his hatchery but does have dark swarm now to start to defend this area more and more zealots being levied up into the main base the elevator tactics here from best uh, are gonna make this attack into the main really really strong maybe too strong for the few hydras and one sunken colony to deal with well, Saxory's like got minimal defense to deal with like just one shuttle's worth yeah. of units, but Best knows he hasn't got this kind of defensive setup where he can handle like multiple shuttle's worth of units just suddenly streaming into the main. It's going to make short work of that contingency of Hydra and Sunken calling that position there. And now he can maybe go to work on that spawning pool and at least get the kill on that. It would be lovely if he could also get the kill on like maybe a Spire or something, but at least just one of these buildings would be really top notch for him. If he can get the spawning pool, it's going to be huge. I don't think he's actually going to get the spawning pool though. Oh my god. Goodness. Just in time here, Saxory with the Ling reinforcements actually managed to save that. Dark Swarm goes down. Lurkers under Dark Swarm, really, really hard to push through, but there's a lot of storms here and not enough Dark Swarm to cover a wide swath of area. He's just setting up a bunch of targets here for the storms to go down on. Immediately, as soon as the Lurkers run underneath, the storms blanket them. Lings are going to come forward. So many Lurkers have died, though. That's the problem with Lurkers. You really have to have the setup before hand ready to go right um but he just didn't have that properly set now he did get a great plague and if he brings up some more links he's got like one one to two more lurkers underneath this dark storm it's crazy he's gonna hold on to this base with such a little small force there still remaining and it does seem like best wants to take a fifth over here at that kind of pushed out base the one with the minerals uh, leading uh, into the middle of the map, which can be harassed really easily by some lurkers or hydras. So we'll see if that comes into play. Saxory finally does get the space on live at 12. Yeah, by the skin of his teeth, that base just hanging on the thread there for a moment. I just barely drying up the storm utility of best now best making a play out for the center of the board once more saxory really actively trying to skirmish with him and force out as many of these storms as possible before finally having to engage more with more commitment there uh, looks like some of the course has been a little bit annoying uh, drying up some of the overlords in the air but i don't think they're really going to get much more value this game so they're, they're pretty much all dead now tries to come in and see if he can get the cancel on this uh expansion but that's not going to be transpiring uh, i imagine best is going to be defending this expansion a little bit more than some of these other bases due to its kind of like precarious positioning here i don't know what's going on down at the bottom center it seems like we've got uh, i don't know a zealot chasing something down there uh, maybe a dt all i see is red dots being chased by blue dots um maybe we're gonna get a click there see what it actually is okay is a zealot chasing an unburrowed lurker that was a little bit funny uh, looking on the mini map, but there it is. He manages to kill or uh, manages to stop that lurker from going down. 
Um, it seems like Saxory was planning to try and take 6 o'clock. He might still try to go for that, but he's really more concerned about holding the space here. Up at the 12 for now. Another great plague there. Saxory doing a fantastic job of keeping these spells active, keeping these DTs going. And now he's got a Nidus over here. He should be able to reinforce this much quicker. Yeah, he'll have a much easier job of defending us now. And with 3 3 finished up on these lings and Plague already online, we should see a little bit of uh, tables being turned slightly towards Saxory's favor. But Best is trying to make a go of it right now, see if he can push out onto this base and get on top of this Nidus Canal uh, set up before any more units can stream out. It is a little bit risky to reposition Lurkers. They can get stormed to death and they're kind of bunched up as they come out of this Nidus Canal. So with just a few storms, he could maybe come in here and do something. But it looks like he's just going to choose to run and tactically withdraw for now and not really commit too much of his unity. He hasn't really got a huge swelling of infantry forces. There's quite a lot of Archons and a few Dragoons, but that's pretty much it. If this army dies, there's not going to be much remaining for Best, so he's kind of hesitant to risk the, the head of his army uh, for the time being and wait for a few more reinforcements to come up here, but I don't think he's going to be breaking through anytime soon. Well, what a fantastic first game we're having here. Uh, for this week of the KSCM. It's uh, the first time we've seen Minstrel go long, really, in any matchup. Uh, these maps are uh, really experimental at this point. We haven't seen much uh, games on any of them, and it's really awesome to see both players kind of adapting to the intricacies and weirdness of these, of these maps here, and we've got a big group of lings now making its way over towards this third base. There's nothing here aside from a few cannons and three three cracklings make cannons look silly if they don't do anything. And now he's just going to go right here onto the Nexus. Even if you bring up everything, I don't think you can stop this aside from having a Templar. Yeah, it's just going to die so quick. Dude, three three cracklings absolutely wrecking that base. And now dropping best down to what? Two base mining? Yeah, I mean, that's really uh, low production value for Best here. And Saxory is kind of still sitting pretty on about four base worth of economy until his main and natural become mined out. And he's kind of mineral smoothed out of his main and just left a few minerals there. So he's already kind of optimizing his mineral smoothing as much as possible going forward. I imagine now he'll want to start taking a few of these other uh, inside bases. Yeah, he's already taken this like inside natural fur to the northeast quadrant of the map already. I think these are the kind of bases he needs to start securing now that he's got this 12 o'clock really heavily fortified. It looks like Best is going to try and come back in here, but I don't think this is very wise. Like, this is a even more fortified position than before now, and Best is kind of assaulting it with a similar force, uh, so this is definitely going to be going more Saxory favored at this engagement. Yeah, this is not looking good. Saxory is shoving forward, and the base of Best is so close to this position. You can see just a single screen length away from the uh, Dark Swarms that have already been thrown down. If Saxer just slowly pushes over here towards the fourth, I don't know if Best can handle that. Best may have to uh, switch into going you know, more southward, try to take a base uh, down at the bottom side of the map and just give up this area. He is sending some DTs and Zealots over uh, to the brand new, what, sixth base of... Saxory, which is just getting some uh, mining online. Two DTs here might actually be able to kill that. The Lings are running away instead of coming here to help. Can he actually save it? Oh, oh my god. One DT swipe away from that. A drop coming down here on the fourth base. This is our fifth base, excuse me. This is a beautiful drop. Getting lurkers right on top of everything. The storm or the dark swarms come down. A few storms going to answer. It doesn't look like the uh, actual nexus will go down, but I think quite a few probes were lost. And uh, this is this is just some good harassment tactic from Saxory, and it will allow him to get some more plagues going as well. With all the reinforcements coming up here, he's just looking for the perfect plague. Where is it? Nope, not going to get it there. The beam of the Archon just smashing that down. This is absolutely a fantastic play from Saxer. He's getting so much done with so few units here, and he's really, like, drained the resources that Beth has available. He's trying to shove to get the kill on this hatchery, but it's acting as a bit of a bait. Now his army is a little bit out of position, trying to quickly run, but some of these High Templars cannot get away. They're very slow, so they will be picked off by those Zerglings in short order. And now Saxer able to shove his way towards this new base that's been taken. Beautiful plague on that whole row of sellouts there. This is looking really rough for Beth. Best, uh, the the, the, the further on in this game that we go, the more I'm seeing it as a factory victory here. Yeah, Bess has played a really good game. 
uh, from kind of a desperate situation, but Saxory really hit his stride uh, as we got into that late game. He was able to go into Hive so quickly and just completely forego his uh, Hydralisk upgrades. He has added on plus two attack for those spines now, but he's just been able to focus completely on Zerglings right up until this point. The Lurkers have just been kind of like a, a stopgap for the Lings to, to get in on top of these different bases. Now we do have drops coming through. Storm should be available. Nice snipe there on the hatchery. I almost forgot how low that was, but it only took about no. two to three hits from a single Zealot to pick it off. Too good to uh, pass up there. The opportunity and a great storm here over oh, wow. at 12 o'clock. Best going to ravage the economy of Saxory. Now, it's not the biggest deal in the world. We do have, of course, so many hatcheries around the map and a lot of money to work with. He can remake those drones very, very quickly. But if Best is able to chain this, if he's able to keep on killing drones uh, and, and, you know, stop Saxory from rebuilding, he might be able to channel this into a winning position, but it's looking desperate. That shuttle goes down, and now he doesn't have anything to harass anymore. He'll have to build another one if he wants to try and make that happen. Yeah, that's what's so precarious about taking these base positions is they're good, but only if you have map control. And unfortunately, once you lose map control, now it's just so easy for your opponent to apply pressure to your ability to mine there. And uh, now this base is just going down the drain. He's not been able to mine here for some time, and a lot of resources have been invested in trying to secure this. So the fact that he's lost so much to secure it and has still been unable to mine from it, I think this might be a bit of a, uh, an untenable position for him to try and overcome. It looks like he's trying to make a little bit of a counterattack gambit, maybe thinking he can kind of come around, sneak around the backside here of the Zerg and maybe try and cut off the production line where the rally point is and uh, maybe force a little bit of a repositioning of the Zerg army. It's not a bad idea, but I think Saxory has so many units pouring out of those hatcheries. You should be able to reinforce. Great storm there. The Reavers just decimating everything, trying to get through this tiny, tiny little choke. We've got just that one tiny gap to shove everything through. I don't know if this is a great idea for Saxory. He's really starting to feed into Best with 28 kills on that Reaver. I think he needs to start to change his game plan, take another attack path. You know, deny, denying these mineral patches is great. Not allowing best to mine here is fantastic. But we need to find another avenue of attack if we want to actually make any progress. Yeah, it looks like um, Saxory just barely not going to be intercepting this uh, shuttle that's going to be able to tuck its way into the northeast quadrant yet again and get a lot of storm kills on these precious drones. And the further damage to Saxory might start to add up and he may start to gas out a little bit, but there's a big Zerg contingency attacking from the northern flank on this base in the north here. And there's, I don't think there's... There, I, with these three Reavers, I feel like Best might be able to hold on to this expansion because of how bottlenecked all these units are on the east. So I think he's going to hold this expansion but i think he's going to be denied mining gas here and i think that's going to be a big problem yeah the denial on the gas is huge but look at how little minerals are coming in for saxory right now he's got that one base in the top right hand corner he's starting to add a few more drones on to 12 o'clock and that uh base kind of in the middle of the map but uh he's he's really hurting for minerals he's down to just a hundred supply he's having a hard time breaking this base and the amount of units he's actually thrown at this is is kind of disgusting he's thrown so much army at the wall here is sax are gonna throw this game now i felt like he was in such a good position for a long time yeah, I felt so too, but uh, we might actually see something like that here. I don't know exactly how much he's got left in the tank. It looks like he's got pretty good saturation on those three bases, but I guess that top right would be If he keeps killing the drones like this, maybe there'll be a enough of a, a dryness to the wells of Saxory that eventually Best can kind of tr out-trade him with these like 10 plus uh, skirmishes. And if he can... Um, right now, the plagues aren't really going to be getting much value because it's mostly just Archon and Zelos that already are plagued anyway. Way. So if he can just keep storming away uh, to his heart's content, maybe Best can slowly start to edge this game back into his favor once more. 
Nobody's attempted to take either the center of the map or the bottom center. And uh, that's a little bit confusing to me. I thought we would see uh, one of these players go for that area. It's as defendable as the 12 o'clock. Of course, Saxory is holding that area. Uh, just trying to keep his drone saturation on the line. I think we got another drop over there at the base in the center. Oh, man. We're not going to get it on screen, unfortunately. It did kill a huge amount of drones once again. Scourge are finally out to chase that, but Saxory has been slowed down a lot here. Still about 100 supply, and that shuttle does go down. So removing the thorn in the paw here of Saxory, but how much damage has it really done? I mean, before Saxory was like only like 20 supply behind, now he's like 70 supply behind. So it does seem like the the edge is finally starting to look like it's back in best favor once more, but he's still not mining much over here. So without him taking... Yeah, uh, this is kind of crazy that he's, a he's able to still be in this game. It's purely based on just how well the trades have gone with those few critical units that are in such phenomenal positions and they're almost impossible to break. It's only two hit points on this, Cerebra as well. Die very quickly, like right now. Does go down, but pushing through here again. This is crazy. Saxory, I just, I feel like taking the middle of the map might have been better a better choice. Maybe trying to take bottom center would have been a better choice. I just... I can't imagine sh trying to shove my entire army, like trying to push through a natural is hard enough, but trying to push through right. this tiny little gap between the minerals and the walls here at this base with three reavers sitting there, we're just going to run lurkers in. I mean, we're not denying too many uh, probes. We're not killing too many probes. And these reavers are getting such insane value. Like you said, the supply differential tells the story. 50 supply ahead right now is best. And eventually he's going to put together an army where he could just walk across the map and kill Saxory in the natural i just i don't think there's enough uh, stuff over there anymore where are all the drones by the way too over here at this base there's hardly anything well yeah he's not continued to grow at all whereas now best is finally getting this base online in the southern region so he can just mine there instead which is a much easier base to secure for him at this present time because there's a way more map control available to him on this southern threshold of the map um so he doesn't really need to mine at this base anymore so saxory's kind of invested a lot for nothing if he can get them um, some probes over there and start mining soon because he's going to start racing ahead in the economic curve of this game yeah, I, I feel like Saxory played the map really, really well up until this this stage uh, of trying to shove through this area and try to take down this base. Had he instead moved to the middle of the map and taken that central area, he could cover the, the one ramp that's leading into the middle and probably have taken that and held it pretty well. He's going to run right up here on top of these reavers, but the storms just blanket everything. Uh, a massive amount of supply was just wasted there by Saxory. He's going to try and dive on top of this Reaver. He does get the Reaver, but now there's enough Archon Zealot to just deal with everything that's coming forward here from Saxory. Saxory going to go ahead and burrow on the other side of these mineral patches. He will be able to deny this uh, base from mining, I guess. But I don't know if he's even aware of the base that's just come up from best down in the bottom left. I think he's starting to realize that there's something over there. He's going to send yeah. a small army that direction, but Bess is... I mean, he's he's picked up on this. He's got his giant army he's going to send around. 60 supply more than his opponent. He should be able to defend that, no problem. Yeah, I mean, Saxby's a very impressive macro player, but I really feel like Best has just had the composure and the patience to, you know, beat him with experience this game. It looks like uh, Saxby, unfortunately, just kind of... Oh, that is messy. That is kind of brutal. I, yeah, I really don't see how is going to be converting this into a win anytime soon, that's for sure. He might not even have enough forces remaining to even take another base, actually, thinking about it. I feel like now Best's army should have enough of a power differential that he can start to deny all the base uh, attempts from Saxory going forward. Some cute play here from Saxory with the one lurker. He's trying his hardest to get some kills on a few of these probes. Oh, even casting an extra storm there just to kill that. Saxory, I mean, he's out of options right now. He's got almost no minerals left. This one base here is the, the only one that actually has um, reasonable amounts of minerals to still continue mining. Saxory 
I, I, I want to say it again, man. It's just he had a great game plan. He had a great early game and mid game. But once he got to this uh, position here on this map, I, I really feel like the, this is a map loss for Saxory more than anything. He pushed through this one area of Minstrel that was just so cost efficient for his opponent. It just didn't make sense. And he just wasn't willing to change his game plan. He's just way too tunnel vision on his original game plan and had no desire in being flexible with the uh, behavior tree afterwards. But he is going to be killing this Nexus finally with like one or two Hydras that are remaining alive. So I guess he gets a, a one little hoorah, a bit of a moral victory, even if he can't close out the game. There's not a lot down here at this base, but I don't think these Lings will be successful in killing this Nexus because one good storm should clear up most of those. And uh, with the Archon and Zealots uh, to the south, there's no way uh, Sakti's going to be able to crack this base anytime soon. Oof, that's so many Archons. My god, the trail yeah. of Archons coming down the map is insane. That's got to be at least 15 Archons there. And it's a lot. It's a lot of Archons. Yeah. Saxory, I mean, what are the tools that he has to actually deal with that? That's a problem with late game uh, ZVP is that you need like a mass number of Hydras uh, unhindered by storms to just gun down those Archons and definitely we're going to have Storm. We're definitely going to have Storm. We're likely to have Reaver as well in any fight that he takes. Lings and Lurkers are just not going to cut it against this number of Archons. Yeah, and he's made no attempts to grow either. He's just trying to get uh, the game closed out with what he's got available to him. I don't think he realizes just how different the supplies and resources gathered are at this point. I think he's kind of lost his place in the game state somewhere along the line and thought he was a bit more ahead than he was when he was trying to assault that base earlier. And uh, he's going to make a few desperate plays here, see if he can get anything done. But because the ar the army's so heavy uh, in Archon right now, like Plague is kind of like not going to have anywhere near as much value as it would before. So just Dark Swarms, Lurkers, and Lings are going to be his only hope. And Best Army still trades pretty good against that. So he's not looking too pretty for Saxory right now. Saxory, the doors are closing on this game. He's just about out of it. He does have like four more Lurkers remaining that he's just trying to battle through this massive Archon army with so many storms supporting it. It's nearly impossible. 11 kill Archon here does manage to survive, pulls back and joins its brothers. And for one final attack here, we're likely to see uh, best breakthrough. Saxory thinking about actually attacking into this position once again. He's going for another like <laughs> it's starting to feel a little bit um, worthless at this point. Or uh, you can do it, Sam. Yeah, you just need to believe in him. Yeah, just need to believe. <laughs> Seventieth times the charm. <laughs> well, here we go. Once again, trying to break through this tiny little choke, Saxory. I mean. What is this even? What am I looking at right now, Shun? Are we really thinking that this is going to kill and win the game? This, this, this seems like someone that's like relying too much on their macro to end the game and they're being stubborn. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it's almost like a frustration thing where it he really wants to be able to close stubborn, that game. Yeah. yeah, it feels like a bit of stubbornness coming through here from Saxory. That's unfortunate. Best a little bit more flexible with his play. Just a frustrating Saxory over and over again. And at this point, like the fact that Saxory hasn't le left yet, it really speaks to how frustrated he is at this point. Yeah. And it also speaks to the stubbornness we spoke we were speaking on as well. I mean, it does kind of ring true. I imagine he's very frustrated because this was almost a one game. He just had to approach the game state in a different way rather than trying to like trying to close out the game with his advantage he doesn't have to close out the game with that advantage he doesn't have to kill that base at all he could just continue to grow and secure his position there and elsewhere on the map as well and maybe even launch assaults from the north using the nidus canal rather than attacking through that tiny choke more absolutely i mean one thing about minstrel is the lane control would be very very strong if you can get control over the center lane of the map you can hold that middle base way easier than most middle bases on most maps for example like um vermeer or something like that is there a, wait is there a middle base on vermeer 
Help me out here, Shun. <laughs> I don't think so. No, there's not. Fighting Spirit, for example. That's a better example. We've got that random Retro. middle base, right? It's very hard to hold because there's so much empty space uh, out there in the middle of the map. But this is a very different map. Minstrel, a completely new map in the pool. We're going to be jumping into our next game here. Best going to move forward as Saxory gets eliminated. All right, Saxory is gone, and we're jumping into our next map. This is a copy, I guess, of Gladiator, or a, a remake of Gladiator. What's the name of the map, Shun? Colosseum. Colosseum, that's right. And what's the name of this map? <laughs> yeah, I'm bad at the names of things. Uh, Kickback? Kickback. That's the one. So we've seen only TVP on this map thus far. But this is going to be our first ZVP here. I'm really interested to see what Shine wants to pull out. Whenever I, as a Zerg player, see a new map, I'm instantly interested in what Shine has to say about it. Like, what is he going to do on this map? Because he is that guy. He's the one who is going to lead the Zerg race uh, in terms of creativity on any certain map. Yeah, I mean, if, if his style of play could be categorized, it'd probably be the bag of build style of play, where he's like literally could do like 50 to 100 different things and know how to do them all at a pro gamer level. Also playing at a standard level, uh, pro gamer uh, caliber as well. So very scary player indeed. And also the, the observer that you see controlling the camera and making sure you see all the hot intense action like the ASL and what have you. So definitely has like game sense of a god, but not quite the execution of a god. So hopefully we can see him in his game today yeah hopefully we see an excellent game here out of shine uh, he pulled out a very uh, standard style in his qualifying games for the SSL uh, nothing surprising there he's been focusing on improving his standard play a lot but if anything gets weird shine is crazy good at knowing exactly how to punish it if, like, for example, Bess wants to cheese him here, uh, I have full confidence in Shine being able to unravel that cheese and, you know, bake it, put it into yeah. a pie, and, and make it his own dish. Yeah. I, if Bess tries to drag Shine down, Shine will probably beat him with experience even at that lower level, because Shine is very good at low economy, weird, chaotic situations as well. Absolutely. And we've got a second base up here. Shine is gonna be looking to take that third in just a moment but he knows the probe uh is ready oh he sends it down to bottom right interesting, interesting. wow this is gonna be not what i expected at all from this game but you know it's looking like a two hatch style i doubt that best is gonna be like oh yeah he definitely took a base down bottom right right he's probably gonna be thinking what the yeah. hell is shine doing he's doing like two base build right now <laughs> yeah i mean you kind of want to be on your your tippy toes when you're playing against someone of shine's caliber you're trying to sneak the probe scout into the main base now maybe let's confirm that two lings are in hot pursuit though so needs to be micro there's not four lings though if there was four lings i imagine best would be really suspicious if uh, he was trying to kill the probe right away but the fact that he's just chasing with two i guess will make him feel a little bit more comfortable he does see the layer timing seems to be somewhat standard more towards a three hatch spire so he might be able to sniff this out that it's not a two hatch build but it's not for certain yeah nothing is certain here for best he's gonna continue to scout this main he's just about lost this probe though one more hit there it is he does pick that off and so the uh, viewing of the main base the scouting information has been removed here best playing in the dark shine I mean, he knows best inside and out. He's probably expecting just the standard build, and he would be right in that expectation. The probe's going to be sent up. I guess he's going to go check the top left first to go see if there's a base over there, but it looks like best is, um, is starting to figure things out. He's at least checking to see if there's a base out there. 
yeah, hopefully Best can shine a light on the, the Zerg shenanigans here while he's in the darkness. It is very precious and important for any scouting information in the early game as Protoss, because until you have those Corsairs online, you're pretty much in the dark, and the Zerg could be doing such a wide range of things that you're kind of forced to um, like hedge your bets as Protoss, and you can't really min-max. But it's going to be a second Stargate. What, what balls of steel out of Best doing this build twice in a row? Uh, he seems like he's liking this style more recently. That's wild. I am shocked to see that. But if you think about a Shine doing a two base build, it kind of makes sense, right? If he's going two base, he's probably going to be going for a Spire, and that means a lot of mutas are going to be coming. He catches the probe on the way down to the bottom right, preventing it from scouting the bottom right uh, base, but that might actually just you know give the information directly to Bez like oh why are you keeping links down there you must have a base in that corner location but uh, he can't confirm just yet he's actually checking around he just checked center left with his Corsair Shun he's like yeah, I mean, he's really <laughs> worried about where that base is I mean, maybe just looking for the Lord. <laughs> I mean, I would check if it was against Shine because, I mean, yeah, sometimes Zerg players do like to take their third base, like, close to the Protoss players. They've got a faster rally point to the front of the Hydra Bust or what have you. Yeah, that would be a wild play back at home. Shine is actually just getting into some sort of crazy macro position with an extra hatchery here at the front and a Hydralist den. Is he going to totally wall this off and try to just set up a really strong outpost in the bottom right? It's kind of what it's looking like at the moment. Well, it ooh, gets the Corsair as well. That's a really big pickoff. I think he might be going for something like that. Yeah, and to be honest with you, it, it could be super strong. If you play like Turtle Zerg on this, he's then got six gases available to him if he secures both of these choke points. That's kind of insane. That's like all he needs for the entire game to get the job done almost. Right. Well, he's setting up a nice position here at the bottom right, but I just noticed this, Shun. Oh, he sees the double Stargate. That's huge. Getting that scout is massive. Oh, These Corsairs are going to make their way down to the bottom right. I just noticed that, uh, you know, if you spawn in a location as a Zerg player, that uh, creep colony, the neutral creep or the neutral sunken, will uh, build creep. Uh, but if you start another base down in the bottom right hand corner, like Shine's done, uh, yeah. that the creep colony won't do anything, or the neutral sunken colony actually won't do anything. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I think it's based on starting location only, unfortunately. Um, but I do think that's balanced as well. I do kind of like it. I think that that's fair. I think that Zerg player should be forced to fortify it um, more manually here with building a hatchery. I don't think they should be able to get like six bases for free too easy here. Yeah, that makes sense. A couple of overlords end up going down here in Shine's base, but he did pick off a Corsair with a pair of Scourge, which is a nice trade. Uh, down in the bottom right, he has a Spore Colony online. Still, Best has not scouted that, right? Did he go down there first? Or did he just? is he just going to see it now? Uh, no, I think he saw it earlier. Okay, so he comes down here, he kills an overlord, he's going to fly on out now, seeing that base, seeing the entire setup there. Uh, I think the Spore Colony is a great idea right now for Shine. One single DT on the map could actually do him a lot of damage, but with the Spore, yeah. it really removes that as a possibility. And Shine just going to macro up like a beast here while Bess takes his third base inside of his main. This is going to get kind of crazy here if Shine like goes right up to Hive and does the same sort of thing as Saxory did in the last game. I, I think he might, and it does make sense with how far away the bases are. The one thing you need to kind of bring this all together is a Nidus Canal. So I would love to see him rush right into Hive and start to abuse that, because Nidus Canal on this map with access to six gas so easily defended on two choke points, that's very easily exploitable here for Shine. And he, it looks like he is setting himself up for that kind of play. A lot of gas has been spent into these Corsairs. They haven't done a whole lot of damage thus far and the zealot count the ground army count of uh, best is very small he's building a bunch of cannons here just to be safe if shine comes over here he needs something to help him defend in the natural and 
He's actually adding on a bunch of cannons right now. Shine is forcing out so much defense, and he can just turn around and go into a hive play from this spot. He doesn't have right. to try and bust here. Yeah, th this is actually kind of crazy. He's he's doing so much indirect damage without really committing anything. And if he does get the cancel on this upgrade from finishing, that's going to be pretty big. And uh, with how deep the cannon line is, the only thing that he, the only way he could stop this from grade from being uh, cancelled is if he was manually storming. It looks like he's just going to then cancel that manually and just uh, suck it up here. It's a bit of a tough. Not the swallow here for best going forward, honestly. But he does have those three bases churning away, so he's got a, a, a still got a bit of a powerful macro engine to work with. He's just a bit behind the tech curve of the game, so it's going to take him a few more minutes before he really starts to come online, has any chance of coming out here. Yeah, going to come in, try to harass a little bit, but you can see Shine Supply is blossoming here with the drones that he's added on and the number of bases he's got. He can spread those drones out to get maximum efficiency. More hatcheries will be coming down here shortly, I assure you as well. Looks like he's about to take uh, the base over at bottom right, that uh, like high ground location there. He just grabbed it. Fifth base online, or not online, but coming up here at 10 minute 30, Shun. Crazy fast expanding from Shine. And maybe what you were talking about earlier possibly coming true. Like. Are we just going to see huge macro games on this map? Uh, because it, it really <sighs> is leaning in that direction. Maybe it's just Shine, but... I think with cross map spawns, especially because you don't have a clear vector to like do any like drop shenanigans or like early air raids or what have you. So I think with cross map positions, it kind of does seem like it does lean towards this. I know he's killing so many of these Corsairs with just pure Hydro. It's kind of insane. I don't know how Bell. <laughs> everything is just going wrong for Bess. He's currently behind in supply by almost 20. It's kind of wild to think about. I, 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 I hate to call games early, but this is really starting to look like if if shine doesn't throw this i can't see best winning at the moment so many hydras coming out here does he have the hive is what i'm wondering because he could just set up without hive a huge contain and try to uh, starve out best one thing to mention about the bases on high ground here inside the main um those two bases although you do get really quick three bases the mineral uh, i'm pretty sure the minerals are lower but definitely the gases are lower they're gonna mine out a lot faster so it's really an important factor here when it comes to a mine out situation diving forward gonna snipe some of these templar really good storms here though annihilating a huge chunk of hydras but there's way more behind this so many hydras coming forward can best even hang on against this well he's definitely not going to be able to push out that's for sure i guess he can hang on with the cannons here at the back and storms to defend that high ground cannon pretty annoying as well but shine is going to reset up this containment get himself into an even better position yeah it's just layer tech sticking on that layer tech shine is going to build up into a huge containment a lot of gateways here though for best can he hold this position or will best break out this is like a super-sized um, normal macro game that you'd have where the Zerg player usually would have the Protoss player contained on just two bases, but because of how much economy Shine has, he's kind of doing the same game state, but allowing the Protoss to sit on three bases while still going Battle Zerg and just pouring units at this contain location. I can't really fault him for it. It's kind of like an ingenious um, move to go for here. He's just doing the same thing, but making it like a large size, and it actually does kind of line up perfectly with what best wanted to do in this game yeah when's the last time you saw like a layer tech zerg on five bases contain a three base protoss this is a really unique situation here i feel gonna snipe the observers oh that one's so low three hp he does get it he does get it drop coming in here towards this base i thought that shine might have seen that but maybe his eyes were elsewhere for that one second and now shine gonna have to deal with this four zealot drop some hydras should be coming out here in a moment the rallies could deal with this but maybe the hatchery will go down first yeah i think he might actually get the hatchery here but um despite some of these brilliant storms there's just so many zerg units waiting in reserve that every time he tries to push forward that he's just getting absolutely stomped and these, his dragoon count is getting reduced too too greatly here he needs a critical mass of dragoons to start bullying back the zerg forces but he's not being allowed to do so the zealots were successful in killing that hatchery like we thought but i don't think that's the kind of critical damage that's needed to kind of you know stomp out the brightness of shine right now 
It looks like he's going to be able to still maintain this con contain, and it's only a matter of time before those gases and minerals start to dry up here soon. Yeah, it's going to happen faster than usual. Uh, these bases of best on those high grounds are going to eventually run out. Um, I, I think we can already kind of see it happening. Uh, if we get a mineral check over at the, the natural base, the second base, uh, I imagine those are going to start to be getting low here. Everything's dried up for best. He's going to be forced back here. Pure Hydra versus pure Dragoon. Never a great fight for those Protoss units. Looks like he's going to keep on pushing out here. He's desperate to make this work, but I think Shine with just a few more units coming up and the number of lurkers that he's got at the front should be able to keep this contained. He's actually even going to push it further forward, further tightening the noose around Best Neck. There's really not much left here for Bess, and I really want to see that mineral check. How much is left? Yeah, look at that. The natural just mined out. It's mining out, of course, before the uh, main base because of that low mineral count. This is really bad for Best. Yeah, he's basically on a clock right now. He has to break out over the next minute or two to have any chance at winning this game. He's kind of forced to trade at uh, all costs here, and it, unfortunately, it might cost him the game because he's just got no units left in reserve. Very small contingency of Dragoons trying to skirmish and pick off some of these lurkers, but they're heavily defended by the Hydra that can just search forward and start gunning them down individually before there's any real response from Best. So his unit's count just keeps getting dried up over and over again. Now he's back onto a two-base economy. There's no way he's going to be able to keep up with Shine, who's not even yet mining from this fifth base and not, doesn't even need to. But now with drone transfer on the way, he's going to have even more juice in the tank to finish uh, Best off here. Beautiful moves with the Scourge there, blocking that drop from getting in. That was really the last hope of best uh, in like disrupting what Shine is doing right now. Shine just sticking on this layer tech, continuing to build Hydras. He's kept his drone count alive and now he's getting uh, the drones over there to that fifth base once again. Five base versus three. Shine is completely uh, out playing best in this game. What can best even do? I mean, look at how quickly his gases have mined out. His main is still mining gas, but his natural right. is gone and his third is going to mine out very quickly as well. I mean, at this point, I'm kind of wondering if maybe best to try to sneak out a shuttle with and put up like a ninja nexus at this like top left natural expansion or something and try to sneak a fourth base while trying to push out maybe get a base going that way it looks like uh, it, the, this is not going to work though he's just drying up his infantry force over and over again until it's in a much more manageable state shine might even feel confident to start pushing in here even though there's a bit of cannon support a few good storms will be able to like kind of keep these forces at bay for a few moments here but there's definitely not enough storms um in the engine of best to keep this going for much longer gg finally caught down wow shine showing us how it's done on kickback beautiful gain there from him unexpected decision making taking that bottom right hand corner but it really worked out well and best kind of fell into the trap taking his own third base and staying at home for so long i i think that was the double stargate showing through right he spent so much money into those corsairs he really didn't have the muscle to move out Absolutely. on the map in time to break through that or make that containment worthless so gg best gets taken down zerg firing back and shine will move forward game number three shine versus stork on dominator the gladiator three player remake I think this is going to be a much more standard game potentially um, than what we just saw there on kickback. Kind of a wild map, that kickback map, but I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I would like to see if um, players will come out of um, ways of combating the cross map spawn situation. Because I feel like there's like a lot of shenanigans that can be done early game with the vertical horizontal spawns. But when it's cross map like that, it does seem to be like both players are relegated to going into an early three base. Uh, fast pull out of shine here, just straight into nine pool, interestingly. Um, I wonder if uh, Stalkwick caught his pants down here because he might try and min max, but he is scouting in the correct direction. So. 
going to be able to slow this down nicely and not face any issues at all. And this map's called Dominator. I didn't realize that. Like, they certainly dominated the pizza with the pizza color. I mean, look at the awkward slices. Every time I see this map, I'm going to point that out. <laughs> yeah, if you've got OCD, probably not the map for you. Uh, the pizza slices are certainly not even here. And getting in and seeing this pool is massive stork he's going to throw down a forge immediately uh, some cannons maybe one maybe two cannons going to come down here at the natural depends on how threatened he feels how many lings are being produced here as well and uh, he's going to be 100 percent fine yeah he sees all these lings um all those eggs get produced at the same time. He knows it's lings. He's just going to drop maybe two cannons here at the front. What do you think, Shun? Yeah, it has to be two cannons. It has to be two cannons. Yeah, two cannons going to come down. Six lings going to come out. Shine's going to get nothing out of this, and he's going to have to play from behind. I wonder what that's going to look like here. Is he going to play standard from behind, or is he going to go for something crazy? I'm not sure. Like... Oh, he actually gets the probe, you know. That's not, not a bad pick-off at all. Now now Stork's in the dark and can't delay this expansion. He doesn't know exactly what the follow-up's going to be, if there's any additional links being made. I mean, inversely, Shine's not going to do anything anytime soon. He's just going to find uh, where Stork is with these initial six Zerglings and maybe make more and wait for speed to finish, then maybe do a big run-by with lots of speed Zerglings is uh, what we could see here. So that would be um, a good way to bring yourself back in this game, a good way to capitalize. Oh, wow, more links already. That's wild, okay. Yeah, he did, he did make uh, gas. He made gas and mined up to 100, so he definitely got link speed. He pulls off a gas and just mines minerals here. It's for sure going to be a link all in, and Stork is ready. I mean, three probes is the absolute minimum, so he actually won't die straight up, but uh, it is still the minimum, so we might still see Shine get something done here if he can kill the probe at the bottom. He does get two connections onto that probe, so we'll get it very quickly, and gets around on the northern side, so at least three Zerglings may be getting into the main base here, which is a pretty sizable amount, considering they already have speed and can do maybe with good um, uh, task switching prevent a lot of mining time here from Stork as well as getting a few probe kills could be very annoying for Stork to recover from. Yeah, this is going to be hard for Stork. Stork not known as one of the faster players. Uh, he's going to struggle to deal with these speedlings uh, and can keep ta task switching, like you said, keep on moving his army. He does get one kill on one of these lings, which is great. Um, probably a mistake there from shine not pulling that back and just like leaving that somewhere in the main base to heal uh instead you know he loses that one ling a zealot's coming across the map we've got the layer on the way no more lings out here so this zealot might actually be a problem he sees it with the overlord but did he actually see it he's doing a lot right, right. now with the ling and i mean this has done a lot of damage he's killed a lot of probes he gets another one three kills on this uh, zergling it's definitely worked out well some more lings are going to pop out now. I think he's figured out exactly what's coming, and he's managed to somehow, some way, bring this into a reasonable position, even though the build order of loss was there. Yeah, honestly, like, the, the game state is very even right now. Like, there might be a slight advantage for Shine even, but it, I don't think so. I think it's actually quite even right now, depending on, like, how, how frustrated Stork is in this moment and how much, how well he can navigate this kind of, like, bit of a rickety road that he's driving on right now, because this game is a little bit unorthodox at the moment. He's trying to get this pylon down slowly, but surely Stork micromanaging just a single probe to ward off this Zergling, which is slowly regenerating HP, but if he does get enough particle beam connections onto that Zergling, it can't actually regenerate health so it will eventually die kind of crazy the amount of micromanagement both players are trying he does always get the probe though oh, shine is kind of going crazy right now with this uh, link control probe trying to dance for its life right now drilling to the other side of minerals but the link's gonna go around and get it interception there a layup for that uh ling just catching it on the flip side looks like that ling probably gonna go down it's so close right now but it's still staying alive this has got to be frustrating for stork the number of probes he's lost in this game kind of unfathomable for just a three ling run by but shine is continuing to keep this alive and I think every moment that this ling survives in that main is a, a thorn in the side or like a a spike in the mind of Stork here.
Right. No, no, for sure. It, it's, you know, metaphorical thorn in his lion's paw right now. And I mean, he, he wants to feel like a dinosaur. He doesn't want to feel like a, a wounded animal right now. And unfortunately, that's all he's going to be feeling for the time being. Uh, he might finally find his stride in the mid game, but it's going to be a long time coming until we get to that stage in the game. He has got the sellout pressuring this third base location, preventing four drones from mining right now for at least a little bit of time here. So that's going to be preventing a decent chunk of minerals not being mined from Shine. So all things considered, not the worst uh, cases for Stork to find himself in. A little bit of indirect damage to kind of compensate for losing so many probes in the early game. I, I still wouldn't say either player has any uh, too large of edge. I think this game will more or less work out to being about even, all things said and done. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. It's so hard to tell where you're at in this game. Even us, we're we're sitting here, uh, you know, full view of everything from both sides. It's hard for us to tell who's actually ahead right now. Imagine actually playing this game and wondering where exactly you're at and when you should send out zealots, that type of thing. Stork's going to decide four zealots, probably going to be difficult for Shine to handle. So he sends them across the map. Will he turn them around? Uh, thinking that Shine will produce enough links to deal with this. I don't think he has plus one just yet. He's going to get speed and plus one pretty soon, but he doesn't want to throw these away before those upgrades come online. Yeah, this is where like the interesting mind games in StarCraft come into play and why it's more like um, poker than chess because he, he he doesn't have to commit with these zealots but he might think that Shine um, you know will just call his bluff and not make enough zerglings and then he comes in and punishes him but fortunately for Shine he's making just barely the prerequisite amount of zerglings to get a decent trade on this with a few additional pairs popping out now uh, to have some residual map control. Yeah, I think all things considering, I think this is this game has gone pretty good from Shine because he only got scouted first, like going for a nine pool speed. So it's props to him for being able to navigate this into a pretty playable game state despite being completely scouted. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, he could have just rolled over and died with that nine pool getting scouted so early. Um, just barely managing to slip by. Imagine if Stork had put a couple more probes in that wall. Uh, yeah. We probably would have just seen uh, Shine fizzle out, but the lack of defense there, the, the minimal, as you said, probe count brought forward to actually deal with that ends up biting him in the butt big time in this game. And now Stork's out here with five Corsairs. Quite a few of them have been damaged. Two DTs are going to pop. That's been spotted by Shine now too. So Shine has full information. Can he deal with this Corsair and DT threat though? Uh, if Sork gets in here and kills that Overlord over at the third, he could end up getting a lot of damage with those two DTs. But I imagine we're going to see just barely enough uh, Hydra's pop out in time to deal with this. Uh, Lings are yeah, being brought back as well. Yeah, the, the other problem is that the Corsairs already softened up a little bit. If they had like full HP, full shields, they could maybe make a gambit of like just diving in there to pick off the two overlords for the DTs to come in. But when they're already softened up, it makes those kind of decisions even harder to execute. So Stork might go for that here and now because they might just... Oh, yeah, yeah. See, this is the problem. The Corsairs just die a little bit too quickly if they're even slightly softened up and you can't go for those kind of gambits anymore. So it looks like Stork's going to have to tuck tail and run, unfortunately. Yeah, he runs on back to his side of the map getting his way up to eight gateways slowly but surely whereas shine pumping up that drone count he's going to be at 45 in no time flat and we'll be looking for a fourth base location to take will he go ahead and grab another main maybe another natural down in the bottom right could be a good call uh, there are quite a few bases around this map that are uh, strong choices though um, not too many great high grounds the the only one that he's got or the 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 main one that he's got right now the the third base there is is a decent high ground to fight from there's also one over here uh, for the third of stork and one down in the bottom right hand corner which should be pretty easy to hold uh, in this matchup but i mean we got to keep stork stork's got to keep his army out on the map to figure out exactly where shine's going to go with this fourth and it's actually going to be at the front okay he takes the mineral only that's an interesting choice yeah i imagine stork wants to take the nine as his fourth no the nine o'clock yes the the high ground there at nine yeah yeah he's going to go ahead and take that here pretty soon that's a high ground and then there's one down in bottom right as well 
uh, that's kind of like the third base for the third spawn right, location right. on this map. Yeah, I think both both locations will be pretty uh, fortifiable later on in the game, especially if he transitions into going Reavers. He has made that Robo in his wall as well, so it makes me think that he wants to keep the door open for going Reavers as well this game. Would be nice to see if he wants to utilize that tech. I feel like against Shine, um, it could kind of be like a double-edged sword. Like, it, with good control, I think like, it'd be a great unit to use against Shine, but Shine also is pretty good at like controlling his Hydras and killing Reavers, so if Stork's not on top of it, it could be, uh, that could be another thing that comes back to bite him later. Coming in from both sides, Shine, is he going to be able to trap all of these Zealots? No, they just barely oh, no. slide out this uh, center-right area this uh, bridge here going to be the escape path the saving grace for stork but i mean he threw away quite a lot of zealots trading not too many hydras and didn't really get many drones at all so shine is bustling away here with his economy he's going to be getting that fourth base online really quickly and maybe going up into a hive right away yeah and looks like stork's gonna be you know going for the polypoid approach and taking the mineral only as his third which is fine it's, it's very safe and conservative it's, it's not like bad or anything but not having access to the, the the faster gas and more mineral more optimized mineral fields can be a little bit of a, a bit of an issue to deal with um i feel like this is the safest option for stork i i, I want to see him uh, expand a little bit more aggressively after this though wanting to take a very aggressive fourth not too long after this well let's see if these mutas can deal the damage that they're intended to he's coming forward here gonna try and snipe some templar scourge coming from the right hand side gonna cut off these corsairs he's going after the templar he gets all three immediately will back off that was beautiful control from shine I don't know how he pulled yeah. it off so smoothly, but that was amazingly well done. Yeah, and Scourge are not easy to control by any stretch of the word either. So yeah, very impressively done by Shine. And he's only just barely trading behind Stork Supply. Got this fourth base uh, up and running. Still on Battlezerg tier units for the time being, but now that Stork's got this third online, he's either going to kill it or take the high tech. Dives in again to get some of these high templars. Doesn't actually get the connection on initially on that high templar, but goes back in for a second dip to make sure he cleans that up. There's not a lot of course says right now so the mutants aren't being punished as much as they would usually be able to kind of just sit stand and fight and tank some of these phase disruption shots off those dragoons while the small flank of hydras to the south going to work on this next so some dragoons being repositioned to deal with that but there's just pure hydra forces overwhelming the dragoons on the left and flank and just getting on top of them too easily here and not enough zealots to soak up the damage so eventually i feel like the army of stork will dry up and this nexus will be falling yeah, this is GG, man. Shine has done this so perfectly. He's going to kill the Nexus now and just back away. Maybe snipe a couple of Dragoons on the exit. Uh, it's it's beautifully done. Uh, really impressive. Uh, needless control, Scourge control, and the follow-up with the Hydras. He did it so smoothly. Uh, he, I, I mean, I, it's hard to explain how difficult a play like this is to pull off. And uh, to pull off, pull it off perfectly like this, you could just see how much practice has gone in for Shine um, to these more like standard plays. This is really stock standard for Zerg uh, in the modern era in 2024. Like a quick mutilist switch into sniping a bunch of Templar and then following up with Mass Hydra. It's just like almost nobody can do this per uh, perfectly or better than what we just saw out of Shine. Like not even uh, Soul Key can pull it off this well. Uh, every single time but shine really showing us how it's done here we do have that tap out from stork and he's gone down shine giving us the lead here zerg is going up we've only got snow and ysc in the back pocket snow not the greatest pvz player but he has improved a lot will he be able to bring this back and clutch it out for the protoss squad or are we going to have a revive on best after these two remaining players have been taken out? Let's go ahead and find out. YSC going to be sent out against Shine. Absolute beastly play from Shine so far, man. We are just talking about in the break how well-rounded Shine has become. And how he's basically able to do everything at a high level at this point. It's just becoming one of those great Zerg players slowly but surely uh, advancing his play becoming just better and better and i wonder what he's going to pull out here i mean anything is possible for this man 
Yeah, it, it's not just that he's he's good at doing cheeses, it's that he's good at doing cheeses into standard play. He's good at just doing straight up standard play. He's good at pretty much doing just anything under the sun. Looks like YSC is going to try and sell uh, a bit of a fake cannon rush here to Shine and hope he bites the bullet. But I don't think Shine's going to bite. I think he'll just chase this with one probe, and, with one drone, and just kind of like, you know, smirk at him a little bit. And this is what's interesting about StarCraft is it, it is all about what you're representing. You understand, if at the highest caliber of play, you understand the possible ranges of what you could have so that you know what you can represent and what your opponent could have or what he could represent. And so there's a lot of mind games and jucks for position in the early stages to try and like fool your opponent into representing something you're, you're actually not doing. And just the threat of that alone is enough to kind of control the game state. And it's interesting to see how someone like Shine has like all the bags of tricks to work with. And he's seen so many games. He's got so much game knowledge to work with. And sometimes he comes up with these really creative solutions to the early game shenanigans yeah you can just see why is he not able to fool shine at all in this game so far we've got another new map here it's called deja vu and much more standard than any of the maps the new maps that we've seen so far much more standard than a kickback or a minstrel this has a wide ring of high ground in the middle and a pretty modest setup for the expansions and main bases seems like shine wants to take top center that's not the base i was expecting him to take considering it is pretty wide open but it is quite close to his starting location one zealot's gonna make its way over there and shine will have to react but he's got plenty of links oh two zealots up here this is actually a, a, a hydra killing or not a hydra hatchery killing force you will kill that hatchery burning it down here quickly he's gonna have to cancel in just a moment but he's going for the counter attack shine yeah. cancels the hatch he's coming in here with these links let's see what he can do because those zealots on the other side of the map are not going to be here to help ysc losing a probe already two probes have gone down more links arrive these two zealots are going to be reinforced in a moment with a third but more and more probes are falling i mean Shine is taking his chunk of flesh here for being forced to lose yeah. his hatchery. And he for he's forced the shield battery and let it finish as well. So there's already a big investment into compensating against his defense. So to be fair, though, he did cancel the third base and hunted down that drone. So Shine is still pretty committed into a two base orientated tech right now. So he needs to get as much compensation uh, for losing that third hatchery as possible. But he's not necessarily needing to finish the game or anything. He st still can go for like a two hatch play here and make something of it. Uh, it's hard to say exactly uh, how. How the, the tables will, will, will turn for both players uh, when the tech comes online i'm not sure exactly how uh, shine will line up now but i would say this is like a slight edge to stalk going uh, sorry to yc going forward but uh if he gets these zealots caught out in the middle i don't think so right he's gonna head head back home with the zealots that were sent out um four zealots gonna make their way back into this uh wall in really important that he keeps that wall in tight uh, yeah. stuffed up he does not want to allow uh, the same thing that happened to stork to happen to him as well a spire is starting here for shine he's gonna go to hatch spire and he, he yeah. might gg him with like initial muters thinking about it like if, if stork it's right if yc doesn't position good cannons in his mineral lines the, the, the stargate will be super late from yc i wonder if there's a timing here to just come in with like you know five or six muters and just start gunning down all the probes out of range of any defensive cannons because i don't feel like the tech of yc will be sharp enough to counter that the threat of the run by with these lings moving around the zealots is going to force them all back and i think you're right he just doesn't know what's coming here no extra cannon in the mineral line he's got the pylon there ready to throw that down but he just doesn't have uh, what he needs there's four muta's worth of gas uh, banked up right now for shine he's got more links coming out he's got i think enough to surround and kill these zealots but it's going to be kind of close he needs to take a good engagement here if he wants to beat this he's yeah. again threatening the run by but it's not as big of a threat here with two cannons why is he going to turn around though a third cannon coming up okay that is an anti-muta cannon there's an anti-muta cannon as well maybe he's going to have the defenses in position to deal with this from shine 
Well, he certainly needs them same because otherwise he would just get absolutely manhandled by Shine. He's got the bare minimal set up right now. He may even want to get a little bit more. I'm not sure. Um, it depends on how much Shine wants to commit into this. If he makes non-stop Mio production here, he could still bowl over YSC despite this uh, commitment into defense. And he actually didn't really have enough uh, Zerglings to clean up that Zealot for. So he's a little bit lucky that YSC didn't uh, force the issue and maybe force any additional lings. I think there's a Sunken back there, though. So he did have that to fall back to as well. Also a pair of Scourge out to try and see if they can get on the intercept course of this Corsair. They are almost going to get it. Just barely one connects. The other one able to break the ankles of the second Scourge, but Mew is already in the natural expansion, killing the gas probes, already siphoning off some of the income of YSC, now rotating around into the main base to see if they can get a, a round two. Just going to be pouncing onto that cannon and killing it. This is why you need at least uh, two cannons, because just one can get pounced on like this. So smart. Shine just going to build two Sunkens back at home with all the links that he's produced and some Mutas popping out to assist. He should easily be able to defend this zealot counter attack and YSC is going to send him in, but this should be an easy hold. Yeah, the main base is going down. We're going to lose the Stargate. We're going to lose the Nexus as well. Two mutas here, forcing everything back. And why is he just going to slowly lose these zealots as they uh, kind of stroll their way back to the natural? One, no, okay. Three Corsairs are out. We've got some Scourge though. To force this back. Oh, great dodge there, but still the Scourge are alive and they're just going to deny the Corsairs from helping out here in the main long enough for this Nexus to go down. He's running around. Oh, he lost one of the one of the Corsairs and it's just going to be a quick and easy cleanup. He finishes them off. GG is called Shine once again, taking wow. down Protoss. Three kills in a row now? Is it going to all kill? He might. That is crazy. I mean, we don't expect this from Shine. I know that we're both you and I are big fans of Shine. We love to yeah. see him play. Um, we have high hopes for him for the future, but is he already at that level? That's crazy to me. I mean, I'm all about it saying I want to see it. I don't want to jinx it, though. I just want to see what happens. <laughs> Snow, so no, the final boss here of Protoss going to come out next. Let's see if Shine can make it happen. Snow, the final boss of Protoss. Spawning here in the top left-hand corner. We're going to be playing this one out on Pantheon. If you guys didn't know, there is still a revive. Semi-finals and finals. Uh, the singular revive is extended to uh, the team that goes out first of course uh, if you uh, lose all of your players on either squad you have that one extra revive that one last chance to come back I wonder who they would revive uh, in that situation would it be best that would be sent out again he, he seemed to have Maybe. the uh, the closest result there and on the craziest right. map against Saxory, but we still have yet to see Snow play. Maybe he's the one that could get that revive. Yeah, I would say it all comes down to the performance in this game. The, the better Snow does, the more chances he'll be revived. If not, best will be like a, re a reserve pick to revive since he has had a pretty solid performance compared to the other players so far. Hopefully it's not going to be on kickback again, for best sake anyway. I would like to see it from Shine, if he's going to pull out the same build or if he's going to do something completely different. Uh, right, I'm right. really excited to see Shine play, but Snow here going to open gateway first, and we've got Shine with the overpool. Just pretty standard openings from both sides, and that's what we've come to expect yeah. from Shine. Despite all the craziness, despite the really interesting and intricate ways he's been able to maneuver himself into good positions in these games they've all been out of necessity if it's not necessary he doesn't need to go for any crazy play he's completely happy going standard right and that's basically what makes him such a scary opponent is you can't just assume he's doing something crazy the guy could just be playing completely standard as well which is which is what makes players like that so dangerous like if you know they're going to do a certain build order or a certain style that's one thing but if you don't know if they're playing super standard or super crazy those players are like a mystery to you and like, until you you get total scouting confirmation even if you do get total scouting confirmation it could just be a mind game that he's playing of you he's never really anything set in certain 
Absolutely not. Oh, this probe goes down. Links make it into the main. Really well executed there from Shine. Only losing one Ling and getting a probe. Two Links in the main now. Going to be chased. One by the Zealot. The other Zealot going to head out on the map. Snow making a slight mistake there with his positioning and the way he was maneuvering that Zealot allowed those Links to get by. Shine already with a bit of a leg up here. He's got to be over the moon right now. He, his chances of getting an all kill just went up by quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, it would love, be lovely to see if he can actually uh, achieve that. Doing a great job of getting another probe in the main base. He's been kind of like on top of things, actually attacking his own nexus there. A little bit of misclick and frustration from Snow. Uh, if he can get under Snow skin early game, that will be huge for him because Snow is a bit of an emotional player. So any form of shenanigans will be enough to like kind of like you know throw Snow just a tiny bit off his game. Yeah, Snow on his game feels absolutely unbeatable. But if you can get under his skin, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a roll. Let's see if we can get in here one more time. He had the opportunity to try and run by into the main one once more, but instead going to pull back these lings, bring them together. Hydra's den on the way here. Shine going to try and bust through. It is a vertical expansion, so this is an excellent opportunity to pull that build out. Let's see if Snow picks up on it. There's not a lot of space back here to build cannons either. There's like maybe two rows that you can build. I guess there's some more space there to the north just below the the ramp so he could probably build some more cannons over there but let's see if he's got this figured out from shine before it can come across this map yeah you can easily fit like 11 or so cannons in those two lines it's, it's, it's fine to cannon up but the, the real question is when will he make the cannons and will they finish up in time uh he will need to go up to a fairly early three which will you know hold off the initial onslaught a little bit while the zealots soak up some damage but if he doesn't identify this quick enough and doesn't have that second and third cannon coming online right away and then has time to warp in another one or two he could just get blindsided by this. Now, we haven't really figured out what kind of uh, Hydra bus this is going to be. When it comes to Shine, uh, it could be any flavor imaginable, right? What what kind of bus are right. we going to get here? Are we going to get the uh, you know Hydralisk range first with just mass Ling behind it? Are we going to get... Uh, you know, Hydra, we, we, I mean, we've got the Ling speed, right? Um, that is a, a high possibility that it's just going to be the range. What do you yeah, think, with Shane? range with Ling speeds is viable with the current setup right now. Um, so we're just pure Hydra. So both of those two things are viable. So it could be range with the mass Ling. Um, knowing Shine, though, I feel like he'll just pull Hydras for the longest time and then go with um, range already on the way and like just hit him with a timing. Right as the Corsair sees, he pulls the trigger to go in with a mass amount of Ling Hydra. Third cannon on the way. This is the safety cannon that we often talk about. Uh, once the temp or once the uh, Stargate Corsair comes across the map, he spots the Hydras. Then he will allow that to finish. If he didn't see Hydras, he could cancel. But having that on the way already is going to be a big boon to him. Shine holding back these Hydras a little bit too long, I think, because we've already spotted uh, the Hydras here. The cannons are up. Can he actually dive forward and force the kill on some of these cannons? He gets one already. Lings are going to be blocking really nicely here. The Zealots are not able to get to the front line. Another kill on a cannon here at the back. The probes being pulled are really messing up the Hydras. But another cannon falls. There's only, what, two cannons left? A third is on the way. Another cannon goes down. Shine is really close to getting this all kill right now. He's so, so close to securing that yeah. prize money. He can taste it right now. He's just on the edge of this base, breaking through. There's two cannons left, and Hydra's making the way to the front. Yeah, all of his senses are heightened right now. Does another dive to get that lower cannon, so now there's a, only one singular cannon remaining. Four are warping in, but they're like clocks. He'll wait until the, the, top, the clock is about to strike midnight, and then he'll dive in and make his play to kill them. He doesn't have to kill the cannons until they're just warping in, so he's going to gun down as many of these probes as possible, and then either pull back or go for the cannons. Ooh, the Overlord may end up falling. Do we have a DT on the way? I didn't see... Any DTs pop out thus far, but if he gets the Overlord, 
and gets a DT to the front. Maybe he could survive, but so many yeah. probes have died. 28 supply remaining. And that means very few probes still left over here for us. No great surround with the probes. He's actually getting a fantastic surround with those. Kills off a lot of these Hydras, but there's only one cannon left. The cannons warping up here at the front are likely to just get killed off. Yeah, he's focusing down way too well. He's found the little angle here where the cannons can't fire and the probes have to engage. He will dive on top of this. So good, the micro here from Snow with all his probes. He's even going to pull the probes from the main to just desperately try to hold on, but Shine's all but closed this one out. It's really well calculated Hydra busting. Like, Shine has got the mathematics down to an almost, like, perfect level, being able to calculate just how far he can push the mark. And finally, Gigi's out. He's done it, man. He's all killed, like, this absolutely crazy squad of players. Like, you got to hand it to him. Like, absolutely fantastic stuff from Shine. All kill prize acquired. Shine puts $2,000 in his pocket after backpacking this entire zerg squad to this point can he finish it off and remove snow from the board one more time snow's angry he just got yeah. wrecked by that bust i mean angry snow can he actually start the run back here by taking down shine I mean, I'm hoping I'm hoping he can channel that rage into just like absolute stellar gameplay. But usually with players like Mini and Snow, that rage doesn't really get channeled into anything constructive, unfortunately. So I'm hoping that won't be the case and he can actually kind of calm himself down and focus and get something done here. Um, Shine's even made so much money, he can go on vacation, just leave it to Jadong and Queen to take care of, and then if he needs to, like, you know, Papa Shine can just come back and uh, steal the thunder at the end. That would be so crazy if Shine, you know, after getting this all in kill, gets taken down by Snow, has to come back at the end with the revive to finish him off. Uh, we, we have to get through this game, though, first. Shine is looking so beastly, so unstoppable. Um, we might just see him clear it out right here, right now. Oh, absolutely. Like he, The amount of momentum he's got uh, going for him is incredible. Yeah, now, Snow is really trying to sell to him the uh, the cannon rush, but with the correct um, Overlord Scout, like he's not too worried about that. He knows that there's a not a huge chance of there being a finished forge in the main base. He knows there could be one on the way, so he knows there's still a little bit of a chance. So we did have a second drone come out just in case, but yeah, un unfortunately, this isn't going to be anything crazy from Snow. There's no like forge being made in the main base to do a sneaky cannon rush to kind of full shine or anything like that it's just going to be a pretty much standard game from here on out it looks like third base going down on location for shine in a moment here zella on the way for snow if he does get a single drone kill with the zella it would have negated the benefit of going for this 11 hatch but it looks like he's already turning away i think he knows he committed to quite a few pairs of zerglings early enough that he can't really come in here with these long rush distances of radiant and punish him Wow, uh, long rush distances on Radeon for sure. Snow turns around, heads back home. Six lings out on the map shine. Plenty of commitment. Oh, is that eight lings? Actually, lots of lings here to try and bully back this probe. Potentially go across the map as well. There's 10 lings. Wow. 12 lings. So he's got plenty of forces here to potentially uh, bully back these zealots and maybe take over in this game. Snow, he's going to be throwing down a forge in a moment. He's got the three zealots. A fourth zealot should be coming out soon. Is Shine going to bust right through or is he going to regret building this number of lings? I don't know. I mean, I, I imagine he will put a lot of damage onto the gateway at least. Um, and with, with good micro, he can definitely get something done here. I feel like he could... With, this should be a punishable position for Shine. There should be enough links here that this, this gateway should bait out the Zealots into a, a cost-inefficient trade. Probes will have to uh, come into the fight here to make sure he can trade well. That uh, gateway getting so low, he's actually going to kill it. Looks like he's just going to let it go down. Remakes a forge here in that wall. The forge a little bit smaller than the gateway, so it buys you a, a, a second to throw that down in between when the, the lings kill the gateway and when they jump forward. Taking a bit of a trade here in this choke. Shine losing quite a bit of his ling force. 
and not really killing anything aside from that gateway. It was uh, actually a, a cyber core there, and the cannon finishes. So he built a cyber core in the natural, which means the gateway going down not nearly as impactful. He can still throw down his uh, Stargate back at home. This has not gone well for Shine, and he cannot break through. He's built so many links here. Yeah. Yeah, Snow's just in such a good spot. This is rough. I, I almost feel like he needs to do something crazy, like a, a drone drill with a single drone to p push the Zealot out the wall and just dive in with the Lings. It's only a single, oh, it's two cannons now. It makes it even more impossible. Yeah, it's not looking good, Sam, if I'm being frank. Um, I mean, he can still navigate this into a playable game, but it's definitely a, an edge to snow for sure. The tech has been reset in this, this, this very slow way, but the, the gateway being um, killed does kind of slow down some of the options for snow, but he still was able to produce the Stargate, like you say, so so, all things considered, he's not really hampered, whereas uh, Shine is, like, taking a little bit of a dent here. He's trying to power drone up, get that three base spire going. But, uh, yeah, I don't know how this will line up. He's also making a Hydro Den fairly early because he knows that this Corsair is going to be bang on time, even though he killed that gateway. Yeah, that's so rough. The fact that the Cybernetics Core was made there is usually a sign that the Protoss doesn't have enough defense to deal with a Ling all in like that or a Ling, you know, a real big Ling flood like that. But he was able to handle it even though he built the Cybernetics Core and he was able to, uh, you know, get that Corsair out very, very quickly. So this is looking savage for Shine. He's going to lose two Overlords before he can even make any air defense. The Spire is coming down. This is such a difficult position to play from. Shine has been in tough spots before, but not quite this bad. No, yeah. I mean, someone like Hero would be better suited at navigating these kind of positions. I still feel like Shine will make a good effort of it, but yeah, this, this is very awkward to, to get out of. Um, usually when you're behind like this, you just want to play how you would usually and just kind of bite the bullet on it and see if you can eventually catch up to the game curb later on. Uh, it's just, yeah, this, this won't suit uh, Shine's skill set nearly as much as uh, some of these other games will. So he may just fall flat on his face finally and uh, be taken out and give a little bit of limelight to Jadon or Queen going forward here. Who knows? Well, I'm all for it. I want to see a longer series. Let's see if Snow can make it happen. Just going to go ahead and work on some of these overlords. Another kill here. Great uh, juggling with these Corsairs. Pulling back the Corsairs that are damaged and getting as much value out of these as possible. He's kept Shine supply blocked for an inordinate amount of time. We're already here with 400 minerals at 8 minutes. 37 supply, Shun. It's so small and there's a lot of that in Lings right now. Yeah, eight minutes in with this this few drones and not even being able to produce anything right now, it's just absolute devastation. Um, Snow's done a great job of abusing his one advantage, which was the tech advantage, and uh, there's not really a lot Shine can do about it. He's maybe going to get an okay Zealots around here because there's no plus one to worry about, but even not actually, even the Zealots holding their own with uh, some good positioning there. Zergling's not going to trade well at all. And now he's going to be punished because he's only just now been able to produce anything, and now he's forced to produce units rather than drones. So this is going to get worse for Shine. For sure. These Hydras are moving around the side. I'm not really sure where they're going. Oh, Lurkers! Interesting decision here for Shine. Going to go into a Lurker play from this position. He's going to try and bust open the front with yeah. Lurker and just work. flood Ling. That, I mean... Work. Yeah, there's there's almost no way to win this game, but that could be that one way that Shine finds. I mean, honestly, looking at the game state, it does make a lot of sense. And he, it's one way he can kind of, like, mitigate the problem of these Corsairs as well and just ignore them and just, just 
just do a full on like dive into the natural expansion with Lurkers. There's only two cannons on this wall. They only have 100 hit points and 100 shields each, so can bust through that very easily. Just going to burrow right on top of the forge. Uh, trying to get this round on the Zealots with the Lings to prevent the Zealots from retreating. Two of them unable to get away. The other two to try and do their best to plug the gap, but the Lings are kind of getting on top of these cannons. Both cannons are going to be falling in short, and now the forge can get targeted down to open up the wall so that the Lurkers can eventually shuffle forward. There is an Archon now trying to soak up against these Zergings and the probes will buffer a little bit of that space but so far shine not able to get in here with these units but the onslaught will not be finished just yet cannon is finishing up though so this might actually spell the end of this attack for the time being oh wow that archon so clutch i think that was maybe for uh defense against a potential like lurkers or not lurker excuse me muta switch but the lurker uh, I mean, Lurker Ling gets handled brutally by Snow with this one Archon. It turned out to be the perfect unit to have in a circumstance like this. A lot of Hydras are out now. Drones are going to start to take damage from these Zealots. Looks like a great pull out from Shine, keeping most of those alive. But he's going to come back in and target some of those on the exit. Snow will be pushed back, but he's got double the supply of Shine and yeah. has managed to reestablish his natural. He's got plenty of cannons there. He will have Storm shortly, as it's 10 minutes, almost 11 minutes into this game. One Lurker here at the front. Can it do anything? Okay, that was the Lurker that uh, was utilized earlier for the bus. Shine is going to go for one last desperate play into the natural. There's not enough energy for Storm. Maybe he can make it work. Here we go. Okay, targeting down the front Templar, that bites the dust quickly. The Archon's actually getting focused down very easily by these Hydras. Start to go to work on those cannons well. Shaves off the cannon that's in the front. These two rear cannons really being a problem though, and for forcing Shine to back off for the time being. And the Overlords are just mowed down by those Corsairs, so now the DT can really go to work as well. I guess there's going to be a little bit of a, a contain going, since the Lurker did manage to get into this position, and maybe he can use this as a staging ground to keep assaulting Snow, since there's not a lot uh, of defensive cannons here maybe eventually can bust through but without the overlords here to scout for this dt he's going to clean up way too easily gg finally called and looks like shine's going to go on vacation and leave it up to jadong and queen while snow maybe steals a lot of the show here wow a really surprising decision for the zerg squad they're going to revive shine immediately here sending him yeah. out on monty hall to try and take down snow for a final time i mean it could just be because jado and queen thought like shine was the best person suited to play on a map this crazy you know this is exactly where his forte can really uh, shine pun intended um but also could just be because you know it is his time to shine pun very much intended as well because he's had an absolutely amazing performance and honestly a bit of a breakout performance he's not really had this much limelight for quite some time he's, you know he, he's a very high caliber player but it is very difficult in such a zero-sum game like this to you know to break through to the surface to get a bit of oxygen uh, the, the depths of and the, the dark, darkness of the oceans of starcraft are very treacherous and not many people ever get to see the starlight Wow, and we're going to get a cheese out of snow? Oh my god, what a finale here. What a finisher. Yeah, I mean, if snow manages to win this, we're going to go to two more games, but... I Oh! Oh! oh wait! No, what? Shine? He's going to jump a, a, a drone over here. I think this is for another base, but will he scout? Will he scout downward a little bit? If he builds the hatchery, it's going to be bad. But if he comes down just a little bit he'll see this base no he's not gonna spot it oh no way my are you kidding goodness. me are you kidding me that is Sam? ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and we're gonna have a gateway here uh, building just outside of this hatchery it's almost a, a game over at this point this is such a bad position for shine it's, yeah i mean he can't fight I mean, this with drones no, and he's opening up this mineral wall as well, slowly but surely. Yeah, which will help Snow come in here for the finisher. 
This is really rough. This gives like so many winning conditions to Snow. Like, this would be one thing if like Shine had expanded somewhere else, but the fact that he's expanded here and Snow's here, it's kind of rough. The finally, the Overlord is gonna spot the bad news already when the Zealot's ready to hop over the wall. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. Oh, he's going we're for the probe. To... Yeah, that's something. If he can stop the probe, if he can stop the probe from getting the zealot in, this might be something to play for. Oh, can he get this? Oh, it gets oh. over. No way. No oh, way. the third time's the charm. He manages to slip over. A drone's gonna slip over here. He goes ahead and cancels his third hatchery. Oh, dude, this is so bad, Shun. What are this we even looking at right now? Another drone gonna pop out. Another drone going to die. The Zealot does go down. Pretty good surround there for Shine, only losing one drone. I mean, he lost yeah. two, right? Because he he did lose the uh, the drone there at the the mineral wall. True. But True. Uh, I I don't even know where we go from here. This is crazy. Zealots are gonna be popping out on mass. Can he actually get probes over and like try to mine that out so that he can get in or what is he going to do from here? Yeah, you know, that's that's what he's going to do. He's going to just come down the lane with some probes and mine it out. But it does buy a tiny bit of time for Shine. It's just so rough because now Shine has to expand down a different lane, get this third hatchery going again because he cancelled it earlier. So he's already slowing that down even though he's going to make it anyway. Yeah, he might, he might be able to do something to stop the Zealots getting in too efficiently here. I don't know, but it's going to be really rough for Shine shine there's a chance that he can kind of glitch the zealots out as they jump over the wall and get good surrounds on them so it's not like over yet but yeah i don't know yeah we've got a nexus back at home for snow i mean it's it was thrown down before this hatchery um so I, it, it's crazy how far ahead snow is right now it's gonna take a miracle an absolute miracle for shine to find a way back into this game another probe goes out on the the top path here on Monty Hawk, like, can he just like pile on this and cannon it? That would be just uh, insult to injury right now. <laughs> I mean, he might, he might go for it. I mean, Shine is mining out that wall though, so he may have some counterplay options to that very soon. And with the third hatchery finished up in the main base, it, it will not take him long at all to mine that out. Mm -hmm. But then will he send the drone over there? Oh, he sees the hatchery. I think the probe's been spotted as well. He sees that they're mining out this wall slowly. Um, he's actually getting some good minerals from this kind of weird wall uh, in between this main and natural, which is funny. It's uh, a compensation, yeah. Interesting decision making there from Shine. Like, I, it seems like he wanted to do the same exact thing. Um, had things gone a little bit more his way earlier on in the game, he would have done that uh, that same hatchery positioning and mining out that wall. Pretty pretty interesting uh, way to play out on Monty Hall. I wonder if we're gonna. Like, I, I I know that this game is really in a bad position and <laughs> it's probably gonna result in a snow victory. But I almost want to see like a rematch right after. I want to see Shine play again on this map. <laughs> I'm just very interested yeah. to see what his decision making would have been had we not had that uh, you know initial attack go so well. Right. Yeah, I'm very curious as well. I mean, I, I mean, he still might be able to make something of this game. I wouldn't say he's like definitely dead. He, he should be dead. I, I feel like Snow will most likely be able to navigate this into a win, but it is a bit of a funky map, so there is a chance for Shine to flip the script on Snow in this. It's not going to be as cut and dry of a victory as Snow would it like it to be. So I, I still think there's like a lot of playability in, in this game for Shine for the time being. Is it as bad as last game? Shine's position? I almost feel like it might be worse. <laughs> it, it's technically worse, but there's more vectors of uh, attack in, on this map. So right. There's more comeback potential still, even though the position may be objectively worse. Right. There's more room for creativity in this position on this map. Yeah. Um, now, Overlords are starting to die, and the Spire is just about done. It's like these zealots are going to get surrounded and killed pretty reasonably quick. But three overlords are about to fall. And I don't think he'll be able to produce anything. Does he have that spire done? No. Spire's not done. There it is. Did he, was he able to make anything? I think he just barely managed to squeeze out one egg worth 
of yeah. Scourge, so he should be able to stop the bleeding here in just a moment. Yeah, I mean, he will still have to pay a bit of a tax, unfortunately. Ooh, look at this and double lose, expansion. Lose. What does he do? Yeah, this is... <laughs> I, th I think he realizes that he's got no hope of um, winning this game anytime soon, but if Snow can't punish these expansions, he might have a strong hope at having a very powerful mid game late, uh, mid to late game later on. And he's just maybe just, yeah, kind of putting all his eggs into the later game phases of the later game phases rather than worrying too much about how bad of a game state he's got right now. He's just going to set himself up for as golden of a mid to late game as he can possibly manage. Double Stargate from Snow. Double Stargate Reaver from Snow. Crazy decision making here from Snow, but I mean, from a position that's almost unlosable. Snow's going to pull out his favorite unit and see if he can end the game with it. This is going to be really tough for Shine. Like, the the, the four base play, uh, although I definitely agree with what you're saying, just like going up into a late game and not even worrying about this kind of tragic early game um, might be a good idea, but with four bases, it's going to be so hard to deal with the, the yeah. Reavers flying in on all these different locations. Yeah, that's true. And Snow might also be a little bit annoying with these Zealots because now he's forced to make additional links and he may even be uh, forced to stop mining with some of these drones in the main base. So another little thing going wrong here for Shine and any damage is pretty critical because he needs things to go as smoothly as possible just to kind of catch up in the game. If he's already losing tr more drones like this and being forced to stop mining, it's, it's a little bit painful. But he is getting a couple of these Corsairs with the Scourge connections and if he can keep the Corsair count low enough he might even have a uh, room to claim some small air superiority and that will help him out uh, in bucket loads against this reverse air because reverse airs are honestly arguably the, the hardest build orders and styles to execute in the game and if snow like makes any mistakes here like shine could just like flip the script on him that's true four gases for shine <laughs> what is happening <laughs> we're going to four gas already we have hardly any yeah, drones on any of these bases, he's be, but he's just going to mass scourge. Yeah, literally just mass muter scourge, nothing else. And he's just going to try and get some kind of small air superiority and leverage that into crushing the Reaver set. And it could work out. Uh, unfortunately, though, the neutron flares of the, the set is going to be finding these muters before any uh, scourge were in sight to aid them. So already softening up way too many hit points on these mutalisks before anything's really been able to transpire. And meanwhile, has been denied my mining gas at one of these bases at the very least so yeah a bit awkward for shine would have been way better for him to just be a little bit more what? uh, what's what? going on is he <laughs> i don't what know this? what he's um i think he's hoping to like build um sunkens uh, down here or, and try and set up some kind of fortified position to, to use as a staging base but unfortunately snow's going to get on top of that way too easily snow's uh, shine's kind of trying to be as cute as possible here unloads the the reaver on top of the sunk and just tanking the shots of the t um, subterranean tentacles uh, trying to get as many drones as possible before the scourge and mutas finally clean it up and he did get quite a sizable amount of drones yeah that was some deadly harassment there from snow so many drones just went down and he can't really afford to produce drones at the moment i guess snow's gonna move out with a really big army in just a few seconds he has to be building like pure muta and scourge to try and fight this yeah. dude if the scourge don't connect shine is going to be dead if they connect on all the corsairs he might just barely win so <laughs> it's uh <laughs> it's a really tough spot right now for shine he could also uh, just get a shuttle snipe would also suffice but that's harder to accomplish sometimes um the, the corsairs will most of the time be in position to screen for the shuttle as long as snow's on top of things he's got a pretty pretty big armada of scourge that maybe he can just do a massive maneuver and like get on top of those but it looks like he is going to sneak into the main base with the shuttle while just playing distraction on the right hand side here there's no shuttle in sight so he's gonna get good connections on some of these uh, corsairs with the scourge not the best actually a lot of those detonate on the same uh, corsairs uh, meanwhile, their Reaver Scarab kills have been huge in the main base. GG just going to be called from Shine. His time to Shine is now over. Snow Show is back in business, and there's Jadong and Queen waiting in the wings. Maybe a little bit scared, Sam. Well, it was an interesting gambit sending out Shine with the quick revive there, but it hasn't paid off. 
And now it's just down to Jadon and Queen. Finish off this final Protoss player. Can either of them, is either of them up to the task of taking out Snow here? Um, Jadong, I mean, kick back. This is a crazy map. We've already seen it once. Is it going to be similar to what we saw at Ashine? Uh, it is vertical spawn, saying so. I mean, you have the direct path for shuttles and mutilisks and what have you into the main bases and natural expansion areas. So not quite of a sit back and macro map. There could be some shenanigans that transpire if both players uh, do try and be a little bit greedy. The other player may try to exploit that. Well, that's interesting. Look at that. Jadon going 10 hatchery. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, you don't you don't see that kind of thing very often. I guess um, he's trying to exploit this map to his heart's content and going for more lava optimization. Very interesting. I, I, I know that nine hatch is a pretty good build, but... Well, it makes sense if he's expecting the gateway first, and it is a gateway first. Hmm. So he's going to get that hatchery out really quick. What this allows you to do is have a much higher count of larva, right. which will give you, you know, bigger spike in either drones or lings, whichever one you decide to go for. Um, since it is that gateway first, we're probably going to see that pressure uh, coming here from snow which means a large number of lings might just be able to smack that down and he could put the pressure back onto snow in his natural right yeah and the timing is actually uh pretty potent as well because the zealots are arriving into the main base as the lings can all sprout at the same time so you've got like eight zerglings to just one single zealot and if you can't get that zealot uh safely away you can really turn the tables on the protoss player and jadon also slowing down this zealot for a few precious seconds with that drone as well just making sure these zerglings are as on time as possible looks like he's gonna get into the mineral line here can he actually get a kill the lings are just a little bit slow they do pop out now though probe dies immediately he's gonna get the surround on these uh with these lings on this zealot he gets the ling in the back there gets some great damage onto that zealot before it can tuck itself in properly and one ling went down one ling one Shit, this is scary this is scary we could actually die just to ling counter attack right now yeah, I mean, he made additional Zerglings as well. There's only three Zealots that are going to be finished up by the time uh, these Lings are arriving at the door. And there's already enough Lings to trade against that. It's looking pretty rough for Snow. Uh, I think he was hoping that the Lings would chase the probe a little bit or something, but that's not going to transpire. There's those three Zealots, but he can already go to work at hitting at this uh, gateway to force the Zealots out of position to then try and go for a surround or run by, as we can see here, just using three Zerglings to target down this gateway while the rest of the Zerglings try and see if they can slip in does get the tucks around on that initial zealot and gets the kill on that as well now there's enough hole in that wall to catch these other zealots as they're coming out of this gateway to kind of keep the zealot count down on two right now is insane that means any additional zerglings will come down here and still be a big boon to jadong and allow him to keep putting pressure on this gateway since he's only able to make one zealot at a time and it does maybe get the surround on this zealot as well beautiful surround he's barely barely surrounded on that zealot like one pixel and he wouldn't have had the block on that zealot it's absolutely insane calculation from Jadong to still get that and now could he be going to work on those probes in the main base as well it's pretty insane damage Sam. yeah he's managed to run by he's in the main now dealing some of that damage looking for more probe kills it's a very tough situation here for snow he will eventually get that forge uh i think he's got the forge already he's got the cannon now coming up uh, in the natural but with only two zealots out more pressure can come here from Jadon. He's building more lings back at home, sending them across the map. He will catch this probe. Oh, almost gets that kill. He has the lair on the way as well. He's well positioned to go into a normal game. This is the Jadong we were hoping to see, man. This is a really nice Jadong um, that we're getting today. It's uh, kind of a toss up what kind of Jadong we're actually going to see, but uh, this is like primo Jadong that we're getting right now.
Yeah, he was known as being the Storm Zerg back in the day, and he's certainly looking more like a storm than just like a, you know, a bit of rainfall, like sometimes we get from him. So I'm happy to see it when he is in the eye of the storm. He's a very potent player, um, not necessarily able to perform to the highest calibers these days, but so far this is looking like one of his more stellar performance as of late, and he's teching nicely into free hatchery spire behind this, so he's not by any means committed to this Ling Assault. It's just a nice way to build a little bit of an advantage to tech into the mid game with and slow down snow as much as possible to get an even bigger edge in the mid game. Spire's already on the way. Stargate just started. Looks like you'll have Scourge in time to deal with this. There's the speed finishing up as well. Ooh, don't want to lose those links just yet. With the speed finishing up, they're much more valuable. Drones heading across the map. That's a little bit of a mistake. He'll correct it in just a moment here. Looks like a rally point was a mistake, uh, was messed up there. But uh, Jadong has yet to send out another drone to take a base in the top right or the bottom right. I think there's one that was uh, rallied forward. I think he grabbed one of those and just sent it out on the map. Lots of hatches yep. here in the main as well. So he's getting into a good macro position. Trapped up here on the high ground, but denying a third base from coming up from Snow. More Lings coming out here. Is he actually going to try and run by once again? There's only one yeah, he cannon. Might be. Mm. Well, Snow's mining out his own wall right now, so it'd be really funny if he lets Snow mine out the wall and then, like, uses that to run by in a few moments here. I don't know. I don't think he's got vision on that mineral being taken down. Oh, he gets a probe. But, uh, okay, 12 o'clock's gonna be taken by Jadong. That's an interesting fourth base location to take. It doesn't net you a bunch of other bases uh, just by taking that, right? But it does give you a pretty easily defended base 12 o'clock is very yeah. hard to get into it's a really tight choke yeah it's a very tight pocket and with just a few lurkers you can really defend that nicely it is also very droppable with shuttles later on as well to come in there and be annoying but very easily to fortify in the uh, early mid game stages here for jadong so it's a nice little choice here probably won't get the uh, intercept vector on that corsair just off by a centimeter or so just gonna have to let that corsair get back to the safety of the main base meanwhile trying to get a good surround with these zerglings to make this force as uh, easy to deal with as possible doesn't want to dry up too many of these zerglings you don't want to have, have to replace these uh, he's already committed a lot of lava into making zerglings this game any additional links he has to make is going to be a bit of a downside now he needs to make as many drones as possible before going back into his uh, unit production snow just being annoying here trying to keep the dragoon alive as long as possible he knows it's eventually going to die but uh, he's just eating up a little bit of the Jadon APM uh, by keeping that Dragoon moving constantly and Jadon now has his fourth base finishing up. He's going to start to saturate that location. Has a big boon of minerals and gas right now, but what can he do with it? Snow seems to be content to just sit here on two bases for now. Rather than grabbing his third, he's going to power up and probably move out on two. Uh, try to put some pressure on Jadong, who's maybe premature, prematurely gone up to four. This is a pretty fast base. I mean, he's going to have to switch into going units pretty soon if uh, he is doing a two-base timing. Because, uh, yeah, he could just get bowled over by Snow if he doesn't really commit into units in a few moments here. Well, one thing to remember is that those early zealots were were killed, right? He moved out with four That's zealots true. and a dragoon, so he's not got a, as much power as he usually would with this like Corsair zealot timing. Um, it's buying Jadong some time, and I Snow is looking kind of impotent here, not really able to deal any damage. He's got some storms coming, but he's going to have to wait a, a little while here before he's got the, the gateway count and the numbers to actually push out against Jadong. Yeah, and Jadong's not been too too greedy either. Like he has made like a you know a decent one one and a half control groups of hydro before power drawing again. So he is making like prerequisite amounts of infantry. So he's able to drone hard and have enough standing army that there's not really anything Snow can do to him for the time being. So at the moment on paper, it's looking like a, a bit of a, a Jadong lead going forward. Ooh, here's that micro from Snow trying to get the patrol micro going. To prevent the Scourge from connecting, but he does take one shot there, almost losing that Corsair. Has to be a little bit more careful with those units if he wants to get maximum value out of them. 
Scourge and Hydra's moving in this direction. He's actually gone around the army here. We don't have Overlord speed just yet. So if he kills the Overlord and gets a DT in there. Okay, there's the Overlord speed. It just finished. We've got Overlord speed here to defend this 12 o'clock. It's a little bit dangerous right now for Jadon. He's having a hard time defending against everything at the same time. But he is bringing the Scourge forward. He's got the Hydra's out in high enough numbers that he can push everything back snow is struggling to find a location where he can deal some damage and jadong is just surrounding these armies and picking them off once again he's hunting down these corsairs he's fine got them trapped into the corner at least three of those corsairs go down only two remaining so that's a big boon for him hey oh my god the dt gets in and there's no uh, overall in position so at least two or three drones are going to go down to that dt luckily he noticed and pulled the rest of the drones back so not too many will die here so somewhat successful Dark Templar delaying the mining and also getting a few drone kills there, but it's not going to be enough to slow down the powerhouse of Jadong. Only just now taking his third base is Snow. And I think, yeah, it's looking really strong for Jadong going forward. He's still going to be on Battlezerg for some time. I don't think he's going to be transitioning to Hive just yet. He's still going to just power drone a little bit crazy here. I think he might even go all the way up to like 70 drones before we see any consideration into teching. 70 drones that would be crazy he's got triple evolution chamber so i imagine he's gonna want to get into hive here pretty quickly um if you're gonna go triple upgrade you can only get into plus two before you need hive right you can't get plus three yeah but he's already looking like he's got 60 he might be going a bit more hmm that would be crazy. Overlord spread is wild right now. He knows he just killed a ton of cores. There's only two left out on the map. So he's going to have the Overlord spread out everywhere. Is he going for a drop? Wait a minute. This is a lot of Overlords being pulled forward. That base in the back is looking really exposed at the moment. There's the Queen's Nest. He will be teching up here uh, with the drop coming in to distract. It's going to give him lots of time to tech up. The army is just moving out for snow. This is the perfect timing. Jadon going to get in here and deal so much damage. This is beautifully done by Jadon. He knows around 12 minutes is like the mid-game timing push off the Protoss player. Beautiful time to come in for a nice tactical drop on this base. This is exactly the kind of plays I wanted to see on this map. Not just sitting back and kicking back and relaxing, but you know, taking advantage of your opponent doing just that and going to be getting the kill on this uh, for sure on this Nexus and try to use a little bit of a lurker block on that uh, ramp to buy some time doesn't even need to really trade well there to be honest getting that nexus sniper alone is good value now he knows about this base in the bottom right as well i don't think he's gonna be able to do anything about that uh initially but if he gets some overlords over there and drops that base as well which i think he's going yeah he's going for it he might be able to kill this race very quickly actually that would be wild loading up some overlords he's going in the Corsairs are there, but they're not in high enough numbers to stop this. There's only two Zealots over here. This could be the winning uh, the, the winning move right here for Jadong. That wow. one single Lurker is going to be such a thorn in the side of Snow. He just cannot deal with that. Oh, and a drop into the... <gasps> what? This is huge. Yeah, those subterranean spines ripping through that probe line. Snow hasn't even noticed. Like, there's so much going on in this game that he hasn't even noticed. He's still not noticed that probe line. He's probably thinking that the game state is much better than it is right now. As soon as he notices now, now he's going to be frustrated, probably wanting to face palm, but he knows he can't take his hands off that keyboard or mouse at all right now. He needs to be firing on all cylinders to have any hope at winning this game. He's currently behind in supply by at least 12. And now this base has been shut down. He's been relegated to just one base worth of mining after Jadon sniped both of those Nexus and got the drone line. And this Overlord with some Lurkers going to be forcing some mine, mining lost in the main base as well here. Forget about the Drift King. Jadon is the Drop King. He's landing so many great drops around this map, dealing an insane amount of damage to Snow. Basically putting himself into an unlosable position. He is looking so good right now. He is going to lose a few extra Overlords. But he's got a base up in the top right hand corner. He has Hive on the way. That Hive tech coming online with this five base economy shun. How is this even yeah. like how are we gonna stop this? This is crazy. <sighs> yeah, this is absolutely wild. I mean he could do pretty much anything he wanted to, and it'd still probably be a good idea. Like he could even come down the vertical vector with guardians and probably make that play work. It's absolutely insane right now. And 
Look at the stream of units. He really does seem like the old school Jadong, the Storm Zerg that we know of old, coming back to life and just ripping apart these new top tier so-called you know, young guns that are like, like supposedly so good, but they're still getting beaten by one of the oldest pro gamers in the business, Sam. Yeah, this army is going to get completely surrounded. This is really looking like the Jadong of old with the Sauron Zerg levels of macro he's completely surrounding this army and pushing it back another base has been taken down in the bottom right for snow it's kind of like a hidden base right now because jadong not going to be expecting that to go up and snow does not have anything defending that location whatsoever it could easily be killed and stopped by just a couple of links sent down to that location but snow is going to be able to mine from that for a little while here his natural base is actually mined out, and I think that Jadong will mine out his two bases on high ground pretty soon as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, that is going to be a factor here soon. It's just not going to happen as quickly as a Protoss player. No, uh, he has also got the Defiler Mound on the way now, so even though Jadong's Battle Zerg is trading more than efficiently enough right now, 30, 20 supply ahead of Snow is absolutely insane with just pure Battle Zerg. Now he's going to have Hive Tech coming online pretty soon, and we'll have Dark Swarms and Plague as well to make these trades go even more efficiently in his favor. Finally, Snow able to churn away some more minerals mining in this bottom right base. But now that um, Jadong's going to have these bases sprouting up in the top right, even when his bases do get mined out, he still should have enough juice in the tank to get the job done. And with this kind of contained setup and denial of the base being taken in the bottom right natural, I think he's just about done enough here to kind of create a game-winning state where he just kind of has to, like, keep the pieces on the board as they are already uh, set up and just trade off as efficiently as possible. And eventually he'll be in a game-winning situation. Snow scouts the top right. He sees what a desperate situation he's in right before this drop comes in onto his high ground. Jadong just going to shut down this base all of a sudden with lurkers and hydras landing here. All oh, the probes are going to get taken down in one flurry of death and destruction. GG is called. GG. Snow taps out and Jadong clutches it out for the Zerg. All right, here at the final screen, we're going to be rounding things out. Zerg going to be going up against Terra next week, and I couldn't be happier, Shun. This is the yeah. main plot line. This is like the, the best possible outcome <laughs> for us. Yeah, this is like if they actually had good script writers for the final few seasons of Game of Thrones, like what it should have been like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, they, they really messed that up, but it seems like the KCM writers are on another level. They're just uh, oh, keeping yeah. it strong here right to the end. It's been such a fun season. We've had so many good weeks, so many great <laughs> moments this season. It's It's been fantastic, Sean. I mean, it, it, we couldn't have asked for a better season. I mean, even like the first like five or six weeks, it was just each week was getting better and better and better and just ramping up to like one of the most craziest climaxes we've ever seen in like KCM history. And now in the semifinals, you've got Shine getting an all kill. I mean, what is going on in the StarCraft world right now? Yeah, I'm so happy for Shine, man. He absolutely deserves that $2,000. Um, Big Daddy Shine, I know he has a couple of kids at home and as a professional gamer like i don't i don't know how popular he is as a streamer um and right. so that that might be really helpful to him you know trying to make things work uh, with a couple of kids and a pro gaming career it's it's got to be tough so you know his efforts really paying off this season i hope that he does well in the asl or ssl as well um, and Absolutely. I mean, if this is any indicator of the level of play we're going to see out of him, I think we're going to see great things this season. <laughs> I mean, one can hope so. And certainly you and I are going to be wishing him well, no matter what going forward. And we'll definitely be keeping our eye on him and has to be said, um, Jadong as well, really strong performance from him, but back to his old Storm Zerg self, really stellar performance. And it also seems like Snow just a little bit dwindling in the limelight now. And maybe his reign is starting to subside a bit. And the psychological toll of those that series with Flash and maybe a few other factors kind of grinding him down a little bit psychologically, enough that he's starting to get pulled apart by some players he usually wouldn't have too much of an issue with. For those of you who aren't aware of the situation with snow and flash um snow right. played a couple of matches i casted on my channel he ended up getting 
uh, kind of wrecked by Flash. Then he went into a six-game series uh, that was all streamed, by the way, by him. He was he was streaming the entire thing, and he went zero and six. It seems like a very big mental blow to yeah. Snow and his dominant performance that we've been uh, witnessing and his rise to power seems to be diminishing slightly as maybe a result of that series. I mean, he was definitely adversely affected. He had his head in his hands and he couldn't even bring himself to like join another game for a very long time. It, he eventually got some of his confidence back from playing on the ladder against some, you know, amateur Terrans and what have you. But I mean, you, you got to think that something like that is taking a toll on him. And it did seem like he was a little bit crushed that day. And ever since, he's not really been himself. So it is almost like a like a champion level boxer that finally gets knocked out just that one time and they're never quite the same after they lose that one fight. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally understand what you're talking about here, Shun. I hope that Snow finds his footing once again. He regains his confidence. Maybe if Flash comes back to the scene, we can see a big uh, match between him and Snow. I just... I don't know if right. Snow's going to be able to perform at his best against Flash. It feels like that's no. kind of his kryptonite ever since that final ASL season where Flash dominated him on the live on you know on the big stage in that ASL finals. It's like he again mental game is such a huge part of Brood War. It feels like he just can't get over that hurdle. Yeah, and it seems like, I mean, I think that's true for everyone, but it does seem to be like the players in Korea have this kind of like reverence and respect for one another. It's very hard for them to not be fearful of someone like Flash, like even though they are very competent players themselves, like when they're in the presence of someone like Flash, it's almost like this aura around him that is, you know, they've got to contend with. They're not just playing against a high level Terran anymore. They're, they're just con they're contending with these like crazy internal emotions, because if you're playing against someone of like Flash's caliber, you're not just worried about the fact that you've got to execute your game plan. You're worried about the fact that you're playing against someone like flash to begin with and especially if that was at a live event on stage with people watching like it's enough for most people to psychologically crumble unless you're like of someone like lights caliber where you've you've done it a thousand times on stage and you're used to it but players like snow aren't used to it they're they're not the kind of guy that's been on stage a thousand times and he's very talented but he hasn't got the levels of experience that someone like jadong someone like flash has got to stay cool and calm under all that crazy psychological pressure Absolutely. Well, here we are talking about Flash and Snow once again, the hot topics right now uh, in the scene, but we really should be celebrating Shine for his amazing play this week, yeah. his all-kill prize, well-deserved, and the Zerg squad will move on to face up against Terran next week. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any delay to that. It should be coming out, like it says here, uh, around the 21st, we'll get that casted and out to you guys uh, probably by the 22nd. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a beautiful season, and I hope that it's going to be an awesome finals as well. See you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys.